All right, we are live. Good evening, everybody. This is Joe with Jonas Cigars, flanked by Sheldon of the Cigar Dad blog. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Appreciate hey, you for coming absolutely, out. Absolutely, man. It's an honor. I, I've been excited about this since we chatted on, on, on Facebook. I, I was really happy when I found your, your blog. It's a really good-looking, sharp-looking blog. Uh, I know you said that your wife does the photography. <laughs> yeah. Kudos to your wife. Oh, yeah. She does yeah, amazing she's, work. Yeah, she's, she's great with camera, for sure. <laughs> she knows, knows her way around that. <laughs> but uh the the blog itself you've got some great content on there and uh, i i think the the way it's written it's very engaging it's not too long it goes into just enough detail for you to actually get interested in what it is that you're enjoying uh which i think is a delicate balance to have to finagle and get a following but i also appreciate you're local so that makes having you in studio for an interview yeah my yeah. studio yes. my deck yeah. hey, you know what? Whatever. That's the best kind of studio, right? <laughs> so we're gonna be uh we're gonna be smoking a couple cigars tonight uh gonna have some libations we're gonna give some cigars away by the way uh First off, we're going to be diving into the E.P. Carrillo uh, pledge in the prequel size, which is the Cigar of the Year from 2020. So I'm really looking forward to that. Have not actually had this one yet. We're going to do kind of an informal review while we're chatting here. Yeah. Uh, and throughout the evening, we'll be giving away some of these cigars, including a couple of these guys. So if you are interested in uh, trying to score some of those, here are the details right here. $2 Super Chat will get you entered into the drawing. $5 Super Chat will get you three entries. So up to you how you want to do it, but uh, we'll be doing those periodically. I'm going to be doing, I think, five giveaways tonight. Uh, one giveaway will be that. Another giveaway will be something from the LCA from this past month. And there's a lot of other really great things. So, first of all, let's get into the Cigar Dad blog. Yeah, what was it that made you, first of all, get into cigars? Okay. And then what was, what was the pivotal moment where you decided, you know what? I really want to share this with as many people as possible. Let's do a blog. So, so honestly, to get into how how I even started, I mean, as as we kind of as we kind of talked about when we got here, we're kind of so, uh, getting to know each other a bit there. Honestly, I I I've always loved cigars, smoking since I was pretty young, yep. well under the age of eighteen. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, well, yeah, you know, you know like whatever. So the way it goes. But yeah, and, and you know now, of course, you can't smoke until you're twenty one. Right. So all that. So anyway. You know, we, we'd go to the cigar shop, we'd buy, you know, whatever we had, the pocket chains to get our hands on, and we'd enjoy, sit there in the cigar lounge, we'd enjoy it. You know, that cigar lounge is no longer in, right. in, in, in the area that sits uh, close to the stores. But, you know, it, it was just one of those things. Like, it, was, it was more so, not that I knew a damn thing about cigar yes. at the time, right. um, uh, or, or anything like that. Yep. But it was fun. You know, you made those memories, you enjoyed that time right. with your friends, and then... Fast forward through the years, you know, smoking on and off, you know, um, you know, 2019, 20, I guess 2018 really rolled around and I kind of started smoking a little bit more with some friends. Um, and then, you know, it, 2019 kind of picked up a little bit more and then the latter piece of 2019 into 2020, it was like, oh man, I just, I just love this. You know, I, I think my palate had finally really developed and I really like tasting all these nuances and these different things and, and, and that made it really fun. Um, Plus, that's what we did, you know. Uh, you know, we did have did, did that to uh, to really enjoy, you know, our time that I yeah. spent with my friends. And even time when I'm outside watching the kids run around. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, I, I'd read other cigar rating sites, and like, you know, like, you know, nothing against the people that are out there, but like, hey, I'm reading along. I'm reading through. I was like, that's great. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't taste the baseball leather from, from my great granddad's. You know, the back of the sweaty palm of the glove. Right. Like that salt. No, I didn't taste that. I you know. I, you know, I tasted the clove or, or right. the nuttiness or the butteriness. Yeah. Or, you know. You know how. It yes. Is. And I was like, you know, I really feel like I can relate this to what is a dad, and obviously you're a dad, so mm -hmm. you get this as well. When you're sitting down and enjoying a cigar, how well that actually pairs with the memory of what you're yes. doing. Yes. And, and honestly. How, as a dad, sometimes you just need to sit down and smoke a cigar so yeah. you don't lose your mind. Right. And I think that exactly right. was like, and my wife's like, you know, you can write. You're a good writer. She's like, I don't know why you don't write me more cards and letters. <laughs> but she's like, I know you can write. So it was kind of a, kind of a double edged sword, right? She, yeah. Now she knows I can write. So she gets it. Like, I'm on to you. More mad at me when I don't. So, you know, <laughs> but, you know, and then so I just started, I just kind of got into it through, through that. You know, I, I, I went on online and I started kind of building my own website. Um, kind of had an idea. And, and, you know, I just kind of dove head first into it. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot of years of experience in it, but I, I will say I've learned a lot and, and it's just been fun, you know, I'm just kind of learning things and, 
and you know, and, and, and reading what things that other people have wrote as well to see, okay, I right. see what you're saying there. But also, you know, I try obviously 100% for my own opinion. Right. I never read the reviews of whatever other people wrote right. yes. before I smoke the cigar myself. After the fact, I'm like, well, I, I think I tasted this. Is this mm -hmm. a common thing? Do my people taste this? Am I right. crazy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and we, you know, and like you said, I don't try to make the post so long that I tell exactly what right. you taste. Exactly at the right time, right time, first, third, second, third, last, right. third, whatever. First half, second half, was there a change in those before? Yeah. yeah, okay. You know, because at the same time, I may taste something, somebody else may not. Right. I want them to experience that for themselves. Right. So, so again, that's kind of what kind of what got me started. It. It's just, it's, it's really been a great time. I really enjoy what I've been passionate about it. So. And, it, and it's one of those things that's, it's a great little hobby to learn as you go. I mean, you mean, you, you dive into something. I mean, when I started the channel back in 2017, yeah. looking back, I, I it's, it's embarrassing how little I really knew. I mean, it really is. I'm just like, yeah. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, not just on the cigar level, just like on the whole video making level, yeah. things that you just should not do for YouTube formatted videos that just don't work. And I was trying all these things and I realized, God, this, this <laughs> those videos look so bad but you know it's one of those things it's like you learn as you go and you if you're always improving you're, you're not in a bad spot yeah. so every, every youtuber i've ever watched whether it be game streaming or whiskey tubing or mm -hmm. it be, um you scar cigar youtube you look at some of their older stuff and you look at the new stuff it's like you know i love the older stuff for what it is right. i love the new stuff even yeah. more, but the old stuff it still has a great a great merit so exactly you really see where somebody came you know, and that's the beauty of it. So cool. Eric uh, Green Octagon is our first uh, entry in today's drawings. Welcome, sir. You are a uh, great follower of this channel. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> All right. So Green Octagon actually has three entries. Oh, nice. okay. We'll put your name into the jar, of course, three times. And uh, just so everybody knows that it's on the up and up. I won't even be the one pulling the names out of the jar. I'll have my guest oh, here pull it off. So yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's gonna be pissed off, we'll be pissed off at you instead of me. Yeah, so that's that. fair. I mean, it's all right. I mean, I do what I can. Uh, <laughs> I think I can handle it. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think I think that's been just the real fun thing uh, is, as as things have progressed with this. I mean, even I've only really had this thing up and running for about three months. Right. Um, and, uh, but for three months, I mean, you've got a pretty good amount of content well, on it. I appreciate it. that. You know, I, I've, I've really tried to get, you know, multiple posts out of each if I can. Uh -huh. So a week where it doesn't work out, you know, I, I try to get some more stuff back on through that. Sure. And kind of keep moving with it. Um, it, it it's, it's, it's never, you know, a, a bad idea to constantly keep stuff rolling out. Yeah. Like that. You know, I try not to review right away. Oh, right. Else. It's hard to keep up with, first of all. So, you know, I try to revisit. I try to smoke something at least once, revisit it. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to write. Sure. Because, like, honestly, I smoke some cigars. I absolutely hated the first time. Yep. Why did I buy that five pack? <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm like, well, whatever. Let them rest for like a month. Yeah. But, rest helps. Right, yeah. It really does. In every aspect. Yeah, it does. Cigars are no exception. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, I, I just try to make sure I put it out there. You know, I, I try to feature different products that, you know, I absolutely love, whether it be you know, cases or mm -hmm. ashtrays or cutters or lights yeah. or phones, um, your cigar rests. Um, you know, I, I try to to feature stuff like that. I try to feature different whiskeys that I've, I, you know, every week that I'm just really loving at the time, mm -hmm. you know. And, and you know, and I'm not featuring. I'm not really featuring the Blanton's gold, right? Because I mean, not everybody can get their hands. Right, there. exactly. So, yeah, and that's one of those things too, where it's like I, I don't tend to go towards these super limited releases. Mm -hmm. You know, these one things are going to be released. They're only doing ten thousand of them right. one time, and then they're going to be made again. Because right. what's the point? Uh, I would much rather, like, if someone were to tell me, "Do you want to smoke for a hundred dollars, or even fifty dollars?" A cigar that there's only 10 of in the whole world. Yeah. It's like, no, I'd rather actually take that $50 and buy a five pack of something right. that there's 300,000 of because at least I'll know that there's that many more people that I can share that right. with. Right. Yeah. So, it's not being that good, right. You know? you know, and if it isn't great, who cares? Right. No, I, I've up. smoked the, the Opus X Perfection A's at mm -hmm. 20 years age and it's amazing. Yeah. 
I never wrote about it on my site. Right. Nobody's ever right. Gonna no one's going to find it. I mean, you know, that, that, that cigar had a few tails that plus dollars. Right. I didn't yep. pay that for it, but, you know, it, it, it's a lot. I mean, I, 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 that's nothing against Opus X. Mm-hmm. I, I do like you know, a lot of Opus stuff, um, specifically the older stuff, but at the same time, like, you know. <laughs> I no, I get it. I, I can I can take a hundred bucks and, right. and get a lot of the stuff that I want. You right. Know? Yeah. You, know, you can a like, hundred bucks will actually go a little far yeah, with all right. the right stuff. Well, let's go ahead and light one of these yeah, guys up. I'm I'm dying to get into this. Oh yeah. I, I have smoked this before. Um, I actually smoked this middle of the day drinking. Oh, you're talking about the Yellowstone Barrel. Yes. Yeah. 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 We had that we had spoke about prior to okay. uh, our uh, you know starting this and uh, starting starting the show um, and uh, you know we drank a good portion of that bottle and I smoked through this and I it. so <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm excited to see later in the day drinking a bit of whiskey actually drinking a, a rye right now I'm actually really interested to see how it changes um, that's that's one of the things I'm really looking looking forward to um, just. Cool. Yeah. Cold draw on this one promises a pretty good draw. Yeah. It's one of the always, uh, besides a lot of people ask, you know, what's the point of the cold draw? Because a lot of times the flavors aren't anything right. like what you're actually right. getting when you actually smoke the cigar. And that's probably true a lot of the time. However, mm-hmm. and I tell this to anybody for what the point of the cold draw is smoking a cigar is such a huge blast of information to your system it helps to temper your body into it a little bit. Yep. So taking the cold draw gives your palate a little bit of a preview, kind of gets it warmed up a little bit before you just burst right into yep. just this mouthful of smoke, which is just full of all these chemical responses. Yep. So there's that. That's William awesome. Edwards, thank you very much, sir. I'm going to hit you in for three uh, entries for the tonight's drawing. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's, it's like it's like stretching before you run. You know? Yeah, like that's a good time. If you don't. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know about you, but I get something almost like peach iced tea off of this. Yeah, yeah, you know, saying that there's like a, a definitely like a summery kind of yeah. fruitiness to it. You know, and I, I mean, to kind of not really like put a dead. Dead note on that. I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah, tea should be great, like a nice tea almost. Um, yeah, I'm getting there's there's a little bit of the spice on, on mm-hmm. a little, bit, little like, like a little white pepper maybe on yep. like the lips on the tongue, mm-hmm. and then I mean, I, I, a lot of times when I, when I cold draw, like I, I get that that really nice like that aromatic tobacco. Yeah, like you know, there obviously, right? But, but you know, a little bit of like. Hey, what, what it smells like a lot of times when I, when I taste it, kind of like what kind of resonates through my nose and off my palate. Um, to me, it just smells like, you know, just, just how do you put it? Um, it's kind of a, a, you know, a barnyard earth sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like, you know, like I, I grew up working on a ranch, and how I like to look at it is standing in the hayloft. Yeah, a big deep breath, and you just smell kind of like the, the, gra- the dry grass. Or yeah, whatever, which I mean, it's a very breath. swarthy, yeah. uh, down to earth sort of smell for back of a lot of work. Yeah. Better term, but and yeah, I love it. I love it. So yeah, I get a lot of that in this. But yeah, that's the great. That's a great point. Yeah, um, a lot of like like light freeness. Yeah, which is a good. Which, is a good which seems counterintuitive with a cigar that's this dark. You know. Yeah, you wouldn't think. Yeah, it's a funny thing because. Uh, I was watching an interview. Who was it? I want to say it was Christian Aroa. Yeah. Who was talking about how the trend of darker cigars being more robust and full bodied is a relatively new concept. Mm-hmm. And it comes primarily from an d- American market who would see dark cigars and expect a big, bold mm-hmm. experience, as opposed to the real more sweet, kind of syrupy experience that a Maduro wrapper typically gives. Right, right. Um, and so a lot of times people would buy a Maduro stick expecting something big and bold and black tasting. And it really wasn't that way at all because that's not what a Maduro tastes like. So the whole idea of having these full-bodied fillers 
underneath the Maduro wrapper was something that came primarily because American markets were expecting it. Right. So, yeah. Interesting little tidbit. And I really thought that was a nice little piece of information that he was able to give to us. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's, let's do it. I mean, that's inter an interesting kind of, kind of way to put it. I mean, I mean, because if you look at it, and I, and I see, when I, when I see people like, well, I don't really, I mean, I don't really want anything super, super complicated. You might not necessarily want that. Yeah. I mean, because I, I tell you what, I've had lighter. I mean, I've had the Connecticut shade that will knock yeah. your absolute socks off. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That is an absolute pepper bomb. Right. But I've had, you know, darker stuff. Like I had uh, a recent release, um, probably one of my favorite Ezra Zion releases from this year thus far was the Raven. Uh, so Lancero. Um, I, I couldn't tell you what the heck's all in it. Um, I'm not going to try. I'm not real good remembering that type of stuff. Sure. I'm really, I am not. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I can look at it and probably tell you what it is, but I, I can't remember it. But um, I tell you, man, I, that thing, pepperiness, dark as the day is, you know, dark as the night, yeah. you know, and, and, and I tell you what, that it was the more, one of the more chocolatey, creamy cigars yep. like I've ever had. And it was a Lance Zero. So like, Thank you. Who doesn't love a good Lance Yeah. You know, my one hang up with Lance Zero's, and it's it's purely, it's a very superficial one. Yeah, it feels, it feels awkward in my hand. Yeah. Like for a cigar like this, for whatever reason, it's just got the right yeah. girth and, and balance to it that I just feel comfortable holding it in my hand. Lance Sarah's, I always, I don't know what to do right. with it all the time, but I love the way they so, taste and smoke. Oh, of course. So, so what, I, what I always laugh about it is, like, I feel like when I smoke a Lance Sarah, especially one, you know, that, that's just, that is that thinner kind of light, especially when it's lighter mm -hmm. in nature, in color, I should say. I feel like Corolla de Bill, they're super yeah. fun. Like cigarette a little cigarette holder cigarettes. and everything, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Apparently, crazy. those things were filters before filters on cigarettes were a thing. Right. Apparently. Which, I mean, they probably were better for you. Probably. Time, <laughs> so. All right. We have another entry. Mr. Uh, Boutheed, squirting German on the big screen, is what he says. Right uh, there. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Sounds like someone you might know. Um. Yeah. So. It, oh god. So <laughs> when, I, when I'm on. Uh, Whenever I'm on the Craft of Hero podcast, the whole cigar kind of um, chit chat format that yep. we got, and it's my good buddy Mark Mark Murray. He owns the um, owns he, well, he's the, the co owner of the podcast. Okay, and the, he he goes as the Viking. It makes sense. He's bald. He's got a long beard. He's got the tattoos. He's, he's just you know he's he is the heathen as you know he's heathen as they come, and uh, you know. He, I always call myself, you know, he's the, you know, my, our buddy out there is also named is Mark. He's Russian and it, it, he's a second generation Russian. Wow. His dad is from Russia. Uh, so he, they call him the Mad Russian. They call Mark the Black. We call the co host, uh, Steve, the, the Bourbon Cowboy. And, you know, so everybody that joins the podcast who's gets their own nickname. Yeah. Gets a nickname. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, my last name's Hafe. It's called H O E F T. Super German, 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 yes. German is going to come as well, and, and I go, I'll just be the swarm in German, and Mark goes, the squirt in German, I'm like, why did I go there? <laughs> no, okay. He just won't let it die, he's like, I'm never going to let it go, like, whatever, So, yeah, that's, that's where that comes from, that's, thanks, I appreciate that, you're never going to away with it, get away from it. My boy Stanley Walker 20 has just joined, Stanley, thanks for joining us, I really appreciate you tuning in, doing pretty good, it feels really good out here. And uh, so far, the cigar is tasting pretty, pretty oh, okay. good. I'd like to pick your brain as to what sort of nuances you're getting okay. right now, because yeah. I always like to see what For other people me, see. I mean, oh man! So obviously, like one of the, the interesting thing about this cigar, and I think one of the reasons why people really, really liked it, was because when you take it and you retro or you French inhale, you know, however you like to do it, I like to French inhale personally. I get way more notes on that. It's hard to pull off. Yeah, I, I, I'm somehow good at it. I don't know. In fact, it just happened. To me. And you know, but for me, when I when I kind of come back through, right, mm -hmm. that it, it's immediately like a chocolateyness, espresso. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit of like a 
a little earthiness there. It's not the earth is kind of like on on the back end, right? But it's weird because like as you completely finish with that retro or the yeah. kind of you know, that's how we do it. That's where that like black pepper. Yeah, it does. It's not that you need. It's not right. right there. It's on the back end of of the of the of the, of the you know the, the cut smoke. Right, which is interesting. And it's it's a long finish. It is. And it's it it's one of those finishes that you know how you get a lot of finishes where you immediately start looking for something to drink because mm -hmm. it's kind of like ugh, it's a little little right. coarse. It's a little this one is clean. Yeah. It is smooth. Yeah. It's got it's got that nice oil texture to it, it on does. the tongue it after does. you blow out. It's great. I'm gonna stick with the mixer because that's kind of what we started with. I will switch to something different um, after the next one. Yeah, when we make our way through. Stanley Walker, I see your entry, my man. You are in. I'll enter your name into the jar. Would you like some more, sir? Uh, actually, let me just finish this off real quick. Oh, I didn't know. But yes, I will do that. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. And honestly, probably for the last stick that we smoked through tonight as we're wrapping things up, I did bring something from my own oh, liquor cabinet. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I didn't come empty-handed. I brought uh, a bottle of. Wine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn my nose up from, to that. From my own collection. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, you know what? Listen, this is a special occasion. I really. It is. This is a special occasion. And, and you know, it, it's not every day that I get to sit down with a new local, new local guy who does the same type of stuff. Brother, really? Do, just a different, different format. And then we get to enjoy what we do together. So I'm going to tell you, you know what? No better way to do this. I don't buy the stuff, purchase it on the shelf. So right. let's do this stuff. So let's see. Andrew. Andy Mary. As, ah. as I and so, uh, I got to compliment the rollers on this one. The ash on this one yeah. is perfect. Yeah. The burn is near perfect. Uh, I read somewhere when I was, uh, I own the, Tobacconist Handbook by Tobacconist University okay. just because I liked it and I'm a nerd. And so I, uh, the only certification I could get okay. because I don't work in a tobacco a tobacco okay. seller. Yeah. I couldn't get the, the retail tobacconist mm -hmm. certification. I couldn't get the sommelier tobacconist mm -hmm. certification because I'm not associated with a mm -hmm. establishment that offers tobacco as a thing. Okay. The best thing I could get was a consumer tobacconist, which I got. Okay. Truth be told, about 70% of that stuff was already stuff I knew. Mm -hmm. But it was a great refresher, and it was good to to learn it all again. They were talking about the color of the ash and what it could possibly indicate. Right. Apparently, the whiter the ash, the more evidence that there is enough minerals in the soil that the tobacco was grown in. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that the tobacco is going to taste bad if it's darker. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've had plenty of dark gray ashes right. on cigars that I love. Okay. But whenever you see a white ash, it is pretty. And uh, whenever yeah. you see a white ash, you always think, ah, well, their soil conditions yeah. must be great. Yeah, so fantastic. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of the black, like a lot of the dark, the black, the black vines mm -hmm. that you'll see is also a hint of like the magnesium. Also yes. Mm -hmm. soil and stuff. So, so yeah. you know, that's uh, always interesting to kind of learn more, 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 more about that. Right? Now, are you are you a lover of the box press, or do you just like the straight Parejos? Give them to me the way they normally are. Um. So I'm 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 kind of indifferent. Um. You know, I, I smoked. I, I, I'm not huge on the box press. I will, I guess, I, but I, I don't buy a lot of them. Not to say that I don't like them. Um, I smoked recently. Actually, I smoked a uh, embargo cigars. Uh, an embargo cigars. Uh, embargo cigar. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, it's it's out in Arizona. Uh, really cool people. They teamed up with Matt Booth. From sure. Matt Booth. And they did a uh, like a more of like a charity type thing for a guy. Now his name is eluding me. The guy that they did it for, he, got, he was on his motorcycle and got hit. Wow! By someone driving a car, and he didn't die. He didn't. He was okay. Wow. He was all right. They got a picture of his face with like a big bandage going off his face, and they put like the embargo. And so embargo <laughs> stars. It's a great name because you think about the, the, the yeah. embargoes right. uh, back in Cuba. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or the time of this, or, hey, right. Cuba tobacco was a legal one. So, yeah. great thing that they did. They came in a band aid looking box. They called it Fromenade, right? Wow. 21. It was, it was fantastic. And, I, and the Fromenade itself comes in, it's a box press, like a heavy box press. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm always like, I like thing. I like cigars i like the more round cigars i feel like they're, they're, they're just i smoke they smoke a little bit better but that box press is like the perfect size for me yeah and it was long as hell um it was probably churchill size and and i'm i'm smoking through this and i'm like 
it was one of the better cigars I've had this year, and it had only been sitting in my humidor for a couple weeks. Yep. And I'm like, man. So, yeah, I mean, that really, honestly, just recently kind of changed my mind on boxes. Obviously, I smoked one of these before. Love it. Right. I didn't really have any qualms about it being a box press. Right. But in my humidor, I don't really have a lot of box press stuff. Yeah. Not, not that I don't. I, I'm not. So yeah. says, hey, this is an awesome cigar, but it's a box press one. Three. Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's funny because I think the idea with the box press it kind of happened by accident in a uh, factory when they put some in a, a box that it wasn't right. going to fit, and they right. just kind of pushed them in. And after a while, they realized, oh, they're a different shape now. And oh, they yeah. lit them up, right. and they were fine. Yeah, fine. But now they do it whenever they find a blend. There goes my ash for the first time. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're you're, you're right I'm I'm puffing away at no, this no, one. Actually, man. Hey, that's a good sign. Apparently, it's. A, I I, I tend to do this, and I've mentioned this before on other streams. Whenever I'm chatting with someone for whatever reason, I puff more. I don't know why. It's maybe it's a nervous tick. I'm, you know? I'm the other exact opposite. <laughs> I like to run my mouth. So when I'm smoking, I tend to not. Or when I'm talking, I tend to smoke slower. So But they would use they would use box press now. If they do a blend and they try the draw and if it's too snug, mm -hmm. they'll box press a few to see if it makes any difference. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that box pressing will yeah. put those air passages yeah. open a little bit. Kind of, kind of push the, the, the punching of the tobacco before they do it yeah. a little bit. One of the coolest box presses that I ever saw was Placencia's uh, Alma, Alma Forte, Alma Forte yeah. with the 602, yeah. the hexagon. Uh -huh. yeah, and dude, that yeah. thing is an awesome it cigar. Is. It's a great smoke. That's one of those $20 plus cigars that I am fine yeah. with buying $20 and, worth of cigars. You know, I, I, um, I mentioned before, Burbank Cigar Blend, um, they're kind of paired with Cigar Warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of their, it's their website. Uh, they have a monthly cigar subscription, kind of like Luxury Cigar Club, where it's not the tiers or whatever. There are so many clubs right now. There, there's tons, and it's like, oh, I want to do it. I do want to do it. Should yeah. I do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. So it's hard. So I, I stick with this perfect cigar blend and then, and then uh, Provada. Provada, yeah. Um, you know, they sent me in, in the monthly box for the $60 was the, the, the wow. of, um, which is like, okay, this is 60 bucks a month. That cigar is already 20 mm -hmm. or more, depending on where you buy it. I'm not happy about that. Yeah. And, and, and I was, it wasn't the only set. There was yeah. five, six others. Right. And, and I smoked a lot through of those, a lot of those. And they were all great. So, all right, cool, cool, cool. With that. Yeah, we so, kind of touched on Parada just now, and we're going to be smoking something from the LCA release here in a little bit. I wanted to talk about Parada a little bit in regards to kind of lead their taking on a lot of facets in the oh, cigar yeah. world and most specifically in the world of cigar clubs mm -hmm. i have tried out a good number of cigar clubs and the first time they existed they were just a tool used by online retailers to as another way to get people to buy cigars <laughs> there wasn't anything particularly special about them it was just a way of saying surprise me yeah. you know and, and maybe exploring something you wouldn't necessarily buy on your own which was a perfectly valid way of doing things. Absolutely. Pravada comes along in 2017 and they have a very, very ambitious and unique niche of trying to get extremely rare mm -hmm. aged limited release cigars. And one of the things that they did that up to that point hadn't been done a whole lot was working directly with cigar manufacturers as opposed to just being a retailer and having a huge pool of stuff to right. choose from. Right working directly with retailers, A, to get stuff that they might not otherwise, and B, get a better rate on it. That was something that not a whole lot of people had done yet. And then he's able to continue to do this. I don't know how he's able to keep pulling these things out of his sleeve like that. Um, and he's always looking. I mean, you've got to just be, first of all, he must have just an incredible personality. People just take a liking to him right away. I mean, I know from talking to him, he's a really neat guy. Dude, he's... he's I'll be real, not to not to inflate Brian. <laughs> not, not that he's got me going but Brian is a great guy. I, I'm I'm working on setting some time down to, to, to talk to him for the blog. Yeah. Um, like I had a set a set time for him, and of course, that one is one of the kids ended up being real sexy. Uh, um, it always happens. It all that's oh, always yeah, the I'm way. I'm like, oh no! So I, I, I email I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry. But anyway, um. Yeah, but dude, he's one of the most charismatic guys yes. you could ever meet, and and you know, and, and, and honestly, the way that he talks, he's not even really a salesman, but what's, it just comes naturally. Yeah, what's like, the um? I can't remember what movie it's from. It was from the eighties. It's like the guy could probably sell a ketchup popsicle cool and like lunch. yeah, like yeah. Uh, I don't care what that movie was. But it's a great quote. 
uh, that's him. I mean, that's him for sure. Uh, and he's, he's such a good dude. I mean, and yeah, I, this guy must just live and breathe to find these exclusive rare releases, put them out there, put them, get them in the boxes for people to try. I mean, really, in reality, that's why the Vince became the LCA. For this yes. Month. He just got bombarded with great reviews on the Vince. Yeah. And, dude, and it's fantastic. And the thing that I love about what he does, you don't get a ton of emails from him. Right. When you do, it doesn't matter if he sent that same email to 50, yeah. 100, or 50, 500, 1,000 other people. Yeah. He responds himself to every yeah. single one. I mean, the dude is awesome. And every yeah. post that someone puts on Instagram or Facebook, he's reading them all. Yeah. If they tag him, he's going to read it. It might take him a week, but he'll read it and he'll respond. Um, but I've noticed something about Pravada that they were doing. First of all, David Rivera, thank you very much. Your three entries are into the jar. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, welcome. Hope you are enjoying the live stream. Uh, but I noticed something. First of all, they got the going. The, I got going with the idea of Pravada, mm -hmm. which was a great idea. Yeah. And then you started seeing a lot of other cigar clubs instead of doing the retail approach, which was pulling from their inventory and just putting together a random assortment. Actually working directly with manufacturers and you see clubs coming up that just do that they just work directly with yeah. manufacturers they're not a retailer they're just a club that started on their own mm -hmm. to do kind of what brian did yeah then you started seeing brian do which i thought was one of the best ideas that he's done which was farm rolled yeah going directly to the farm yeah. taking the bands off yeah. so that cuts off a huge amount of marketing cost right there uh first of all there's that less much of production cost of having to make the bands and then put them on and then box them. So we get these unbanded cigars directly from the farms. We don't talk about what the brands are. We just talk about what farm it came from yeah. and basic specs. Yeah. So, yeah, you know so you get your tobacco where it came from. But it. Yeah. And then very, very minimal tasting notes to look for. And then you get just four great cigars for cheap. And, and, cheap. and, that's, not, and that's not saying that there's not taste amazing tasting notes yeah. in the cigar itself. That's like, they don't really say, like, hey, this is what you're going to taste like. Here, here, where it's from. This here are the bullet button. points, Enjoy basically. It, yes. Right? And I think that gets people away from, oh, this is the band. This is the band. Right. I want this one with yeah. this band, right? It gets away from it. Yeah. You know, and it really I think it, likes to break that mindset of, like, I want to smoke the most expensive one. Right. I want to smoke these super rare cigars. Not, not, not to say that that's a Right. I, 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 right. When I can get my hands on it. I've got like three frames full of bands that oh, I love yeah, showcasing because yeah. they're so pretty. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, it is so cool. Yeah. Because it's like, man, that really just changes the game. You, you see people talk about it, and it's like, this is my go-to smoking. Yep. And and you, you start to be less distracted with the cover. Mm -hmm. You start really just getting into what you're experiencing as a cigar, which is a big deal. And then you start seeing other cigar clubs do their own version of farm roll right. and not knocking them for doing it. No, if no. There's, someone's doing a good idea, there's no. nothing to stop you from copying it. So honestly, that's kind of where, <clears throat> well, okay, so you get Liga Bravada's number nine versus number, was it 52? T-52, T -52, yeah. yeah. That's the same kind of concept. That's kind of how that all started, if you didn't know this. It, it started of like, you know, they were taking kind of the, 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 the little, bit of, little bits of tobacco that, weren't, that were left over from some of these bigger plants right. and combining them in different ways. Mm -hmm. And and what, what, the, what, what Drew Estate noticed is like the guys who were you know putting these together, they're smoking these cigars and stuff like they personally roll for their own personal smoke. Mm -hmm. those, the odds right. and ends that were left right. over. And they sort of called it the number nine. They right. all called it number 52. And they liked it so much and they sort of were so good. They're like, you know what? Let's make this a regular production yeah. cigar. Let's put this together, and and you get the huge debate. Do you like the number nine? Yeah. Or do you like number I love them both personally. I, I, do too. I uh, like them both. I, I like the fifty two a little better. I think I, I like the better. number nine a little bit yeah. better. So, and everybody's different. And there's like but age but they're age both them, right? but they're both so good. They are. They there's are. I mean you're basically trying to compare, you know, right. a gold medals Olympic with a silver medals Olympian. It's just like the difference and, is so small. And then you you got to you should have won the gold. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like okay. Right. It's like one of the most polarizing debates. And regular production cigars is the number nine or is the number fifty-two? Which one do you like? You know, yeah. so. And I get a lot of people chiming in. Uh, David Rivera just showing hashtag We Are Provada Support. A lot of people uh, who watch my channel are big in Provada too. So I'm really, I am really glad that I'm still part of Provada because it, it is more than just a club. It really does focus on the community aspect it of it as well. It really does. I, I honestly, man, I have, I, I, 
a couple guys that I've met. I've been, like I said, I've only been the official member for eight months. Right. Um, unofficial, you know, because a friend of mine was actually getting two boxes and he was, yeah, I was buying one <laughs> off the ground. It's like a backdoor deal for our boss to go. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, like it was that day. She tells me, hey, you got to wear the Pravada, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was looking for the Pravada. So, so no, it, it, it it's funny because. I, I've been in the group for a few months and I'm commenting on stuff. I'm posting stuff. I'm talking to people about mm-hmm. stuff and, and learning stuff every day yeah. because I mean, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong. There's new brand new guys in this and they're asking questions and that's great. Yeah. Nobody is like, you're an idiot. No one talks down. Yeah, that's right. So like, hey, here's an answer. Hey, actually that's been answered in this post tags mm-hmm. a minute and they can go check it out. Yeah. Know? But to, to the community aspect of that, um, a, a guy that I met on there, I was looking for the silver Mesa for, for like, Mm-hmm. Couldn't find it anywhere. It already sold out pretty much everywhere. He's like, "Hey, my my brick and mortar has it on some." He snagged it for me. And he's like, "Don't worry about price. I tell you what, this is what I'm looking for. You have it, or you can find it. Let me know. If not, whatever. We'll, we'll figure something out down the road." Yep. Sent me two of them. Smoked it. Loved it. I mean, that's one of those ones um, that. Uh, oh God. Uh, who the hell blends the, the silver maze? Oh, one? Steve Saka. Thank you, Saka. Yeah. Sorry, I was like, "Why is my brain working today?" <laughs> Um, you know, he said, no, that's not, that's not like a, a flavor wrapper or anything. Right. Like that. Yeah. But dude, it is kind of one of the sweetest. Wrappers. It is. It's I mean, incredible. Yeah, it's if you've so ever good. smoked like a Baccarat, yeah. that's the intense level of sweetness that you're getting off it. And it's not sugar tipped oh, no. like the Baccarat. It, it, is, it is so good. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. I smoked it and it was like light roast coffee. Mm-hmm. And, that one just out and it's, and, and it's, it's one of those that I bought a box of. Uh, it was my number one pick from la- for last year for mm-hmm. 2020, mm-hmm. and it was such a good cigar on every level: uh, construction, draw, mm-hmm. burn, aroma, flavor. Everything about it was just about as perfect as I could ever want a cigar for a mild to medium cigar yeah. to be. Yeah. And I'm not a big mild to medium guy. I tend to gravitate yeah. more towards the fuller body. The fuller body yeah. But there was something very special about that stick, yeah. and it. I love that. I love that Vitola. That mm-hmm. that that sort of Lonsdale, oh, yeah. so it's so perfectly balanced. The, the Lonsdale is blowing up as one of the more popular yeah. tools out there. Yeah. I mean, dude, you, like you go and you're like, all right, I'm looking for this size. It's like, okay, there's got the four, there's got the three, whatever. And then you've got the Lonsdale. Sold out. Gone. Yeah. First thing gone. You know, yeah, those, those are the Coronas. Well, They're gone. Well, yeah, it's like, yeah. So it's, I think that's like that mix between it's not thin like a Lonsdale. Right. Like it's damn near just as long. It's not quite as girthy as like your Churchills or whatever. Yeah. Or you know, or a Toro, yeah. Or a Toro's right. It's that perfect in between. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. nice. But no, so and then another one, another great story. I, I, I was telling him earlier, I work for the DOD. Um, I can't have my phone where I work. My the government computers, if there's anything tobacco related on the website, they typically block it. So I can't get through the <laughs> on a site. Like so many people can do it. They're like, bye, 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 bye. I'm like, damn, I can't do that because yeah. by the time I get on the site, it's gone. Yep. So so when the cover released, as as some of you guys can see, or some of you guys probably can't see, I'm a big fan of purple. Um, it was my sister's favorite color for many years. She's no longer with us, but um, and just by kind of extension, it became my favorite color. So like my cigar rest is purple, and it was a purple cutter. So yeah. I'm like, I got the vibe. Yeah, and, and their new and their new big humidor bags are all purple yeah, now, which are really yeah, cool looking. So, yeah. yeah, I'm like, all right, done, sold, yeah. fine. Yeah, so it was yeah. just you know for me, you know, I was, and then the guy. He's like, well, here, I'll tell you what. I will grab an extra one for you. If you're able to get yourself one, don't sweat it. I, I'm not unhappy about having a second one. Sure. But it's yours. So when he, he was able to order it, I sent him the money. I'm not worried about him. You know, I'm, I was like, well, you know, it's, he might not give it to me. I'm not worried yeah. about it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I'm not afraid to be vocal if somebody screws right. me out. Right. And I don't think that he wants that. Not, not no. to say that he would. Right. Great guy. We've had multiple conversations of, of just like all the different things that we've smoked. And we've honestly just had regular conversation right. now over, 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 you know, uh, across Facebook Messenger. So it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. And that, that's just the kind of family. It's a great, that, it's you know? a great community to be a part of. Uh, William Edwards, we were talking about the uh, Silver Mesa Brulee Blue. It was the Lonsdale that we were talking about earlier, just in case you missed that. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, the, the the community aspect since starting the channel, and I didn't start the channel because I wanted people to send me cigars. Mm-hmm. Although I knew that was possibly a thing that might happen. Yeah. But I don't know how many times just fans have just sent me something because they wanted me to see 
they wanted to share first of all it was like i had a great experience with this i would love for you to get just a part of that you know and uh, i've had guys there's a boot a dude that's up in sheboygan wisconsin george coulter if you're out there i'm talking about you brother he is an amateur cigar maker and he just blends his own stuff really? and he sent me like four different of his blends and like three of each of them and they're kind of they're they're rugged looking because he's he, he gets himself yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. not a professional roller no. so they don't look that great but they tasted so damn good yeah, you know, and it was just him it's like i just he's a 60 something year old guy yeah. and he says i just sit in my my garage and i just i have all this different type of tobacco and i just like, like roll them up to randomly and like oh that tastes pretty good and so i'll just and roll it again like mix them and then there's a few that like, just stick and i just go with that whatever man like i mean but you know like some of some of the most uh, the ugliest food that you can find mm-hmm. out there is some of the most the best taste yeah like street food yeah yeah you know? i mean I'm, I'm a huge fan of beef liver but i'm also getting german, <laughs> german. Like, yeah, you know. Um, you know, like grandma, grandma used to, you know, deep fry it in, a, in an iron, in cast iron skillet with onions and, and ugliest food you yep. can find. But man, you talk about rich flavor. Oh, I'll never forget that. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, but yeah, so. So you are pretty big on your blog of talking about not just the cigar you are smoking at the time, but also what you're pairing with it. And I don't just mean beverages because you definitely talk about that. Yep. We talked a little bit about this off camera before we started. Pairing also with setting. Yeah. What's happening around you right now? What has happened to you just before this happened? The occasion that you're smoking the cigar for. All that kind of gets lumped into that general category of pairings. Talk a little bit about how you approach pairings. Um, I guess specifically with beverages, but to just to just emphasize a little bit of what you're looking for when you sit down with a cigar when you pair it with so, yeah so honestly it's kind of funny. that's a lot to unload I'm no sorry. no yeah no, no no absolutely so um but i you know it, it's kind of funny how, how i kind of started getting into doing, doing the pairings right to be honest when the first one doing pairings i didn't know what they yeah about it. excuse my french but i didn't know a thing right, right? i i you know i was like all right well no one does right when no, they we're, first you know, because like because at the same time temperature affects things as we talk right. about mood mm-hmm. how much you eat how much you drink water wise at least you know, yeah or, or how much you drink yeah yep. um and and you know so i, I look at you know I, I tend to smoke if it was the first time i'm smoking a cigar for at least the first time if I, since the first time i smoke something from a particular blender or company or whatever i try to smoke that straight stack just by mm-hmm. itself just to test it out because i want to see what that one's right. all about um and then i'm like all right you know what this one has like the okay so like for instance the, 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 the pledge sure has you know that, that creamy kind of smoke to it lots of you know little, like said darker chocolate some espresso in yep. there some of those little, little bit sharper notes that yeah are, that are i won't say pungent but very aromatic very yes there finish that off with that really just perfect amount of the black pepper mm-hmm. um so i'm like all right i i, I want something that's going to have that smooth on the nose with a nice kind of little bit of maybe heat on the finish. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna go for let's say, well, um, I mean honestly, like the Blanton's Gold would be a good one. Sure. It has a little bit of heat on the end, yep. it's got that explosive, like just dynamite, rich oakiness to it, the vanilla, the the honey, all those 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 things that are right on the nose, and it, it kind of blend, blends very, very mm-hmm. well together. And, and, or things you wouldn't even think that mm-hmm. would work, right? I paired a principal cigars, money to burn. Um, they, I love that because on the foot they have an old. It's it's legit. It's like a laminated strip of 1920s stock. Yeah. Stock stock bonds. Yeah. The bonds from, from from you know right around the stock market crash. Which mm-hmm. is um. And 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 they wrap those on there, so it's like, all right, this will be cool. I paired I paired that actually with the Widow Jane because it's like I just kind of thought it was funny, right? Money right. to burn, Widow Jane. I was like, there's 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 some things there, right? Like that I thought were kind of funny, and it worked out really good. Yeah. You know, Widow, Widow Jane is, is a really good one. You know, you're, it's a ten year. It's, it's it's got like a lot of that you know sweeter, maybe a little bit of citrus kind of that stuff, and then like the the, the, the money to burn was a pretty full bodied cigar. Mm-hmm. It had a lot of like it had the pepper, it had a lot of the, 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 that dark rich tobacco aspect to it. And they blended really well. Certain things from the whiskey brought out like the more the citrusy citrusy note kind of mingled really well with like 
with that that, that pepperiness to it. Like it was, it was kind of an interesting kind of blend, and it worked out. It wasn't my favorite pairing, right. but you, those some things work, some things don't. Um, so honestly, some sometimes I have rhyme or reason to it. You know, like okay, I know this cigar has this fullness mm-hmm. um, in body, or has this full, or has has this kind of strength. So mm-hmm. I want to. I'm not talking about strength. I'm talking about the head here. Right. Uh, just for, for some people get it mixed up. Right. Body versus strength is a big difference. Right. There, right. So. And then you always talk about like strength of flavor too, yes, because right. there's a different thing there too. Right. So so you know, I'm like, all right. So I, I want to kind of pair something. You know, because a lot of times some people say don't pair strength with strength. Sometimes mm-hmm. people say pair strength with strength. I like to pair strength with strength mm-hmm. because as closely as I can, because then you don't have one thing overpowering. Right. You. Right. That's why you're not going to smoke a Nicaraguan Puro, you know, something like out of foundation and drink a light bo- or like right. a light roast coffee. Right. You're just not going to really taste the coffee. Right. Right. It's just not going to work out. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of some of the, 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 the uh, I guess, the, the reasoning behind yeah. that pair. But you know what? Like I was mentioning the Yellowstone the night that I was drinking. It's a barrel pick from, from Blitz Cigar Lounge here in St. Louis. Now that had such like an almost licorice or cherry, like a cherry, mm-hmm. like a, like a cherry taste to it. And then I smoked. Oh, my God. oh I was smoking the Las Lo- Lo- uh Le Mission. Um, That's on my cue. Yes, <laughs> you, you, dude, you have to smoke yeah. that. It is one of my favorite cigars that I've had this year. Uh, well, I guess it was last year. It was this year. Um, and I tell you, man. It literally finished. It was like a chocolate covered freaking cherry. I tell you, it was something. It was something that I've never expected to be so yep. good, and I absolutely loved it. So, yep. it, and then so then so but so that, that that's like I said, pairing with a coffee or with a scotch or a whiskey or a rum or tequila, if that's your thing, whatever. Those are, those are kind of hard to do. They're, yep. they're almost kind of like hit or miss, right? Um, and it leaves a lot of room for experimentation. It too. does, and, and that's always the, and that's the best part about it with with cigars. That's why I always buy three, yep. four, five a box because if the first pairing doesn't work, I'll find one that does. Right. Um, but I tell you, one of the biggest things and one of the reasons that I started the blog was because how much it, just smoking a cigar in that time that it forces you to sit and yes. focus on one thing yes. allows you to reflect on everything else that's going yep. on around you. And then I think that's that's one of those things where, especially as as, as dads, right? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, kids are all over yeah. the place. You've got the job. They're kind of all consuming. Right. Yeah. yeah. You've got the job. You've got your 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 your, 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 your channel, things that you do. Blog. Yeah. You've got all this other stuff that's going on, but it forces you to sit down and reflect on what's going on. You're watching. You know, looking at your son running around in the yard. I have two boys running around in the yard. Like, man, it's nuts. He's already four. Right. He's already one. It's like, yeah. how is he growing? It, it's, yeah. it, it puts a big smile on your face. And that alone changes your impression on whatever you're smoking or whatever you're drinking. Mm-hmm. And it just pairs. Right. Like, I'll never forget the smoke the first time. I smoked a Las Calaveras 2016. So wow. black, black label, I think, is yeah. what that one was. Um, from my buddy Mark, um, again, co-owner of Craft and Pure. Um, he, uh, he gave that to me on the day that I asked him to be him and his wife to be the godmother or the godparents of my young sure. son. Um, and that right there alone made that cigar one of my favorites. Sure. Ever smoked because yep. it's just that it's just like, you can't forget it. Yeah. You know, you, you just remember it. That's what makes you remember the notes from a cigar. Yep. Like you, you smoke a, you know, dozen cigars a week. Mm-hmm. Some of them you'll remember, right. some of them you won't, but that memory, it, it's just, I always try to think about it. Like, you know, this is what's going on in my life. Really? What, what, right that second and it really just helps you reflect on that get a better understanding be a better person yeah you know it's like or, or you know I'll, I'll say it like you know like oh, man, i'm out here the wife's mad at me or whatever and you sit down <laughs> and say so sorry like you know could have react to that better or yeah I, you know I, it forces I, you to be introspective it, it does it, it does and, and i think that's the, the beauty of it and, and it's, it's a lot of fun so yeah that, that's kind of like the, the, the my, my perspective on how to do pairings I, mm-hmm. I think cigars they pair great with whiskey they pair they pair great with you know coffee they pair great with any all kinds of stuff sure number one they really just for prepare with memories and what you got going yeah. on more than anything. yeah and i think that's the thing. yeah and uh it's it's an interesting that you talk about you know 
when you have a good memory attached to a cigar, how it will actually make it taste better. Uh, and you'll remember so many more things from a cigar if you're in a good frame of mind. Yeah. And I, I, I made a post uh, a couple years ago on Instagram talking about how I never want to use cigars as a stress reliever. No, no. I want it to be a way to recalibrate for sure. But there's a meditative there is. aspect to it. Very, very real. And that's far from calling meditation a stress reliever. It, oh, no. it, it's not a stress reliever in the same way that it's like a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. like cigarettes or even alcohol can be for a lot of people. Uh, I mentioned this uh, to someone recently. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Brian. Just mm -hmm. talking about how the difference between like bar culture. Or I think I was talking with um, the dude from the Big Ash Smoke book. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the difference between cigar culture in a cigar lounge versus bar culture. And it's like they have a lot of similarities. People go there to socialize, mm -hmm. but people okay. don't go to cigar lounges to get hammered on nicotine. Well, no. They don't go there to get hammered on anything, really. They go there to definitely fraternize. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it is a haven unlike anything else for most people that go there Absolutely. because it's, first of all, there's very few places in public where you can still smoke. Second of all, cigars are kind of sacrosanct to anybody who likes cigar lounges. And to be able to go there and just completely block out everything else in the best sort of way. You're not escaping. You are just taking some time to reset and recalibrate. Yeah, yeah, and sure. cigars facilitate that in a way that, unlike anything else I've ever really experienced. 100%. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Well, it's about time to do our first drawing. All right. Here's the very official looking pickle jar. Olive jar. Yeah, olive jar. Olives are just pickled. Right. They're right. I mean, honestly, <laughs> if, if you live, like I said, 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 said him earlier, if you live in South St. Louis and you don't have at least one of these lying around, you're you're not actually from South. All right. St. Louis. Who do we got? So we have Sydney Walker. Or Stanley. Stanley, Stanley Walker. Sorry, Stanley Michael. Walker. Stanley Walker. Stanley Walker. You are the uh, winner of two of the EP Carrillo Pledge in prequel. So uh, hit me up, buddy. Uh, Direct message me or email me, jonascigars at gmail.com with your address info, and I'll get those over to you. Thankfully, he's he's a local guy. He lives oh. up there in uh, uh, near Ferguson or Florissant, okay. and uh, I've run into him a couple times up at Montres, another local uh, smoking joint. Great place. So, uh, yeah, great hit me up, brother, and I will send those over to you. Congratulations. Anybody who hasn't won yet, your names are still in there. Stanley, you can't win any more tonight, but you got a pretty good prize Anyone else who hasn't won yet, your name's still in there. And if anybody still wants to get in, you can get in anytime you want. There's a lot of other great prizes to come. Absolutely. The last prize we will be giving away today is the trilogy by E.P. Carrillo. That is the La Historia, the uh, Encore Majestic, and, of course, one more of these uh, prequels. Absolutely. Great trilogy of cigars and uh, very fantastic smokes all the way around. Um, I personally, of the three, do you have a favorite of those three? Ooh. That is a really hard choice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it, it would it would probably have to be. Um, I mean, I have one of the, the last stories in here, it, 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 it's still in a humidor. I almost brought it along. Oh, I'm probably gonna have to go with the last story of the pledge. Yeah. Not that I don't like. Um, oh, God, God, the encore. The encore. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, yeah, things have been crazy busy with. Um, uh, when you work in cybersecurity, that's kind of the name of it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so that one's, I mean, that one's good, but I, I really just like the other two better. I, I just pulled so many different flavors out of that that yep. I didn't get get from the Encore as much. Well, you know, it's, nothing wrong with it's funny, yeah, and, it, and the Encore, and I've had from the original batch, and I've had the follow-ups. The follow-up is still pretty good. I mean, the, on, the original batch was clearly the best. The re-ups of that particular blend, I thought were pretty decent re-ups. Um, I knew going into it that this was not going to be my preferred flavor profile. This was going to kind of go outside of my box a little bit. Still a fantastic cigar. And it's one of those things where you probably will enjoy it better if you've smoked a lot of other stuff first, like in your career of smoking. Yeah, like yeah. you get to, to know cigars a little bit more, you're going to appreciate that right. a little bit more. So it's kind of for more of the more advanced cigar smoker. Yeah. But yeah, I think my favorite is still the last story on here. It was it was one cigar that my wife gave to me, uh, one that I actually had from the original batch mm -hmm. in 2014. She gave to me as a part of a, a Father's Day gift, mm -hmm. and it has these connotations attached to it exactly. that I just yeah. I love that cigar. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like my, my wife bought me a, uh, a box of uh, 
the RC 255, RC Series 255 uh, uh, from um, Tatawahe. And she bought it in the Grand Perfecto size. So wow. Grand and a quarter inch size. Giant cigar. Yeah. I, there's so many people that don't like those bigger, mm -hmm. bigger cigars, bigger sticks. Um, because, you know, as you smoke through it, sometimes it gets right the tobacco gets stressed. So yeah. Like, uh, I'd say two thirds through it, third and a half or so. And it's kind of the back end of the yeah. cigars that we have for that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a similar uh, experience with uh, Fuente's Royal Salute. Uh, it's like the Double Corona. It's a big seven by uh, fifty-four. It's a pretty big cigar. It takes full two hours to smoke that thing, and that's if you're you're really paying a lot of attention to it. Uh, and that's one that holds up even towards the back end of the cigar. It still holds up well. So it, it's hard to pull off a big cigar that doesn't get boring or muddled or anything like right. that. Yeah. But uh, so. yeah, so. You know about asylum cigars and how they have like the ogre, which is like the eight by eighty, uh, right, seven by yeah. these giant, huge cigars. Our so Aroma Crafts, like Femur and yeah. uh, Jawbones, that are just yeah. Like huge. Or the uh, or the Oscar Woody, which is the ridiculous two foot long right, cigar. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Asylum put out an Instagram post on April first that said coming soon the like the super ogre the nine by ninety and then you skip to the next pay the next picture on it's like just kidding it's just <laughs> it's like ah oh, you got me i was i wasn't gonna put it past asylum to put a nine by ninety out there it didn't seem outside the realm of possibility to me but anyway uh talking about brands are there some brands that you are just gravitating to right now more than you had before or just more than anything else right now yeah so um there are a couple actually so i now some of these brands have been around for a while some of them haven't haven't been um so so right now um i think probably my top five i will say at least change almost sure given month. yeah but <laughs> foundation, <laughs> the way it is foundation cigars i mean uh and nick does an incredible has done an incredible job he's got a really cool story i mean mm -hmm. he just up and moved down to Nicaragua. Yeah. And learned everything there was. About and he the just, just making, yeah. Making process what a passionate guy. Planting through the growth, through yeah. the picking, through the aging, through the whole nine. Yeah. And then the actual cigar manufacturing process. And he said, all right, I'm making cigars. Yeah. And um, one of the first ones, and again, I started with probably one of his best. I smoked the fifth anniversary. Um, yep. Wise Man. And I have like half a box that was left. And oh my God. Dude, that was such an incredible cigar, and I was like, wow. And, you know, since then, I've bought every, just about every size, every Vitola of, mm -hmm. of, or, or type of the Wise Man. Mm -hmm. I, I bought loads of the other, um, of his other, other, other stuff, mm -hmm. um, and, and I just like some of it. So that's yeah. the foundation is one For sure. Um, Tatuaje, they've been around a long time. They're yeah. probably one of my biggest go-tos. I mean... They're always coming out with new. He's got so many blends. It's just, it's just all so damn good. Yeah. Um, and and then, um, Stolen Throne. Sure. I don't know if you you smoked a lot from them. I recently grabbed their both sizes of this year's release of the Crook of the Crown. Mm -hmm. oh, probably one of my favorite smokes this yep. year too. Um, I mean, I'm always keeping an eye on Ezra Zion, but. Ezra Zion's they're, hard to keep yeah, up with, man. Yeah, they're just releasing so much stuff. And they only make like seven of them. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, get them while they last. Yeah, we only, we've got 30, and that's oh, once they're yeah. gone, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's always, and I, actually, I actually put a, a post up on Monday where I kind of talked about that, where it was, you know, is this something that I want to spend the money? Do mm -hmm. I want to spend 60 or 70 bucks right. on this five pack of cigars? What, what if I smoke it and I absolutely hate right. it? What do I do with the other four? Right. <laughs> I've not yet run into that problem. Yeah. Luckily. Um, I've not found one that I disliked um, to the point where I can't smoke this. Yeah. So I, I've had ones that I've liked more than others. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, Ezra isn't really one of the ones I'm watching just because, I mean, they're always just right. going and going. But yeah, but the crowd heads. Yeah, for sure. One, I just, I love what they do. I yeah, and John them. Huber is such a, another one of those really cool guys, very magnanimous. Yeah. And it, he reach out to him, he'll he'll reach back. Mm -hmm. And it, he, he is not a uh, inaccessible guy. You know, if, if he knows that you're into this this thing, he is so, so happy to talk to you about it. And then 
I'd say, I mean, Room 101 right. uh, lately has just been my thing. Run by the ultimate badass of badasses <laughs> in the world. Dude, he, dude, that guy is, if I can come to a tenth of the coolness factor that that guy carries like, in his little finger. So the, dude, the dude is, he is like, if you looked up suave in the Webster Dictionary, there's a picture of that dude. Yeah. yeah you seen his fucking car? Dude, it's incredible. Jeez, it's incredible. it is amazing. That, that man has got impeccable taste. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and I love his story of being, you know, a blunder for Davidoff, right. and eventually just striking out on his own because he just felt stifled in his creative process, and he just wanted to be able to make his cigars. And you can see that he has definitely gotten past. Yeah, it because <clears throat> everything that dude touches, everything that dude does, dude, does, dude, does, <laughs> does is just wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, I, yep. I, I, I've smoked so many, and I have almost an entire shelf in my little humidor home. It's just almost all one one. And, and it's really funny, too, because I've smoked some Room 101 from when that was Davidoff era. Right. And I liked his blends, you know. But you can see the difference between Matt Booth with Davidoff and Matt Booth post-Davidoff. <laughs> and the post-Davidoff <laughs> booth is so much better. Yeah, yeah, for real. I mean, uh, so. And just the cool stuff that he does for people, too. Yes. And all the great cigar makers follow that trend. Um, you know, so they yeah, all that's, reach that's out. One. And then lastly, um, I, I probably definitely uh, would have been Roma Craft Tobacco as well. Yep. I mean, they're, I, again, I love their theme, right? Mm -hmm. They do like that they've got the crew pack and they've got the new right. they've got all the different ones. Right? Have you had the Baca? Yes, yeah, yeah. Got, the Baca is one of my favorite of spots. I've got, uh, I had the Baca, the, the short stuff. The Pygmy? Yeah, the Pygmy, yep. and then um, their the longer version of that. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Yeah, the Pygmy, <laughs> the, the Pygmy, I think, was the original Vitola that that's all they made, yeah. and then they've expanded the Vitola yeah, line a little bit. And now the, the bigger version of the Pygmy that's still the Baca um, is one of the rarer versions yeah. of things that they do. And I was glad to get a hold of one of those. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got the Wonder Ones, which right. is like the holy grail of craft right. cigars. Again, have one of those in my human room. I'm like, I really, really want to smoke. <laughs> I don't know if I get another one. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, those are probably the ones I'm really wanting. Yeah, I, 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 Foundation has always done it for me. Uh, and it was really cool that he added the Lancero version of the Wise Man Maduro to that lineup of cigars because that was just a fantastic uh, one that I reviewed earlier this year was the Goliath. Yeah, uh, I saw that on your YouTube channel. And it was a just a great cigar. Uh, I smoked the David and did a review for that on Instagram. I prefer the Goliath. And yeah. that's that's an unusual trend for me because usually I go towards the smaller ring gauge cigars right. over the bigger ones. Yeah. The bigger one just did it for me for whatever reason, oh, yeah. and that one just had it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Stanley, I did hear about the Alec Bradley factory fire. Um, it was actually a barn fire. Uh, he lost two or three uh, aging barns, which is a cry and shame. Although I did read that he doesn't anticipate this affecting production too much because this was supposed to be for tobacco that was to be used in cigars for the 25, 20, uh, 2025, 2026 years. So he's got a little catching up to do, but it's not a complete disaster. I talked to you earlier about this a little bit, how it's kind of odd that he yeah. said that they can't insure those yeah. barns, which is... I think, I think it's just a big liability thing. I guess. I mean, maybe it's the region that they're in. I mean, Honduras has got perpetual unrest going right. any time yeah, of the day yeah. so and honestly like, the thing too is i mean it's, it's like it's like the green cycle with their cars their expensive the yes store because just the right amount of heat the right amount of dust Oof, yeah and they apparently said the cause of fire was something electrical like yeah. the lamps in there just there was some wiring issue and of course if you, <laughs> there's a lot of dry stuff in there that's just going to catch uh yeah so it's a damn shame for sure. It's a Jeez, it really is. Uh, I bet the fire smelled amazing. Though. I did. 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 And uh, that was an interesting cigar. It was, it was out there. And it was a des it was a departure from his typical flavor profiles that he it, typically it goes to. It wasn't as wildly peppery. Yeah. As the rest of them. It wasn't as dark tasting. Yeah. It had a lot more nuance going on. You lighten that like that. It's the killer bee or the bee swarm. Yeah. And it's like, whoop. Yes. Man, that has got some kick. Yes. Like that is, that is red pepper like all yeah. the way. That's like, 
So that's another one that he just released. Uh, I just released re more recently. He released another line uh, called the Emilio. And yeah. I just had one of his for the first time called the Papa Joe kind of crap okay. for me. Uh, and it was a cheaper, it was like a $7 cigar, solid smoke, oh, yeah. solid smoke. Yeah. So yeah, the James Brown stuff, I really like, uh, I have been piqued in interest by a couple, the Amandola cigar company. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, Noel Rojas has okay. been coming up with some stuff. I just smoked one earlier today called the, the, the Rojas statement. It was the wrong time of day for me to smoke the cigar. Right. It was a full bodied, full strength. You, I mean, like nicotine like, strength. And it's just like, <laughs> wow, uh, I need to eat some chocolate or something because this is just intense. I need to lay down. A little but it was just like, I will definitely smoke this again mm -hmm. when I'm sitting here with a bottle of bourbon or something because that was just oh. incredible. Yeah. So those brands, and it's so cool that they're just when you see these new brands come up, it's always encouraging because it's like with all of the FDA regulation mm -hmm. constantly looming over the head of the tobacco industry, which is just sickening. I'm not a big fan of the ATF. No, yeah, it's no. yeah. Any 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 fast the ATF? Not a big fan. Someone uh someone recently put out a post that says the ATF should be the the name of a convenience store, not a the government department. No, <laughs> kidding, yes. But. Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Yeah, you buy all three in the same Man, it, it's Missouri. Everybody. You would make money like oh, crazy. Yeah, so yeah, so but it's encouraging to see these new companies, these very small ventures, starting to pop up oh, yeah. and put out really, really good blends that are very creative. They they appeal to a very nice segment of the market. They just have great quality, and it's encouraging to see that there's still people trying. They're not giving up, no, I, and that's what I like to see. And I think that's the beauty of where we're going. Now, don't get me wrong. You're never going to see, like, the Dominican side of Cuba, 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 Cuba Romeo Julieta, right. uh, right. or, 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 you know, uh, or Roma, de, uh, Roma de Cuba. Right. Any, any of those are never going away. Right. But it just it is the market now is boutique, boutique, yes. boutique, man, and that I love that. Yes, because I love those smaller brands because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, dude, those are the ones just like yeah, out of the park, like right. home run, you know, just and it's like, wow. And it and it, it just it's a separation between commodity and and handcrafted. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really the big difference. Now, to be fair, I wanted to bring this up because it's something that I've been noticing. Uh, General Cigar Company, they're the ones that own Macanudo, Cao. <laughs> A bunch of stuff. Yeah. Punch. Yeah. They have been coming out. I got to give credit credit is due with some blends that I think are actually pretty damn creative. The so, coil. okay. Can you smoke that? No. I, I have one for you if you cannot find it. Okay. Um, they are really good. You want to talk about like me? Off the cuff, I wasn't expecting it. Sure. Fruity body. Mm -hmm. Only like a very fruit nuance type yeah. cigar. That's it, and dude, it is it is dark as night. It's, it's very mm -hmm. dark, very you know, deep, like earthy brown cigar. Mm -hmm. it has a really cool wrapper. It's coiled around there, so as you peel it, that's nice. It coils yeah. off right appropriately. <laughs> and man, I that one was the what was the, the, the biggest the biggest one that, that came out that was the um, the, the uh, Amazon Jason. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So. There are, I've heard it said more than once that those are holding their way. They're yes. Pretty, pretty well. Yeah. They are on par with some of the, the, yep. the, the older Amazon base. Now, again, if you can find the old Amazon base and stuff, you've got a gem. I mean, those. I mean, just, just, just buy them. It yes. doesn't matter what they're charging. Buy them. Just, just get them. Because they're, they're going to continue to go up in value. Constantly. And right. they're like the Andalusian Bull. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put them in now. LL. They're, they're, they're great smokes, especially the older age ones, mm -hmm. right? And they are just. Yep. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so punch has just come out within the last couple of years with like a Chinese carryout themed line of cigars. They have the egg roll, the Kung Pao and the chop suey. I've only had the egg roll. I'll be doing the Kung Pao later this month. So yeah. I'll be looking for that. Egg roll is pretty good. I, and I appreciated I like the, the con. Cool. I like the theme. I like the packaging that they put in. It was thinking outside the yeah, box. Like, it was like, eye it's catching. Like, it's like, like, a, like a Chinese takeout. Uh, and, yeah. and it wasn't all gimmick because the cigar of the egg roll delivered it had some very interesting flavors that reminded me of an egg roll of course yeah, yeah. and it was very cool so I, I, if they can continue to do stuff like that 
great. I mean, that is just fine. I just don't want big conglomerates making the same mm -hmm. shit every year yep. that doesn't excite anybody. You have your core line, but have something right. that's exclusive release. Right. I mean, I mean, you look at uh, Viaje is a great one, right? They've got like their zombie and and, and a couple of the other ones. I I just scrolled some really vintage stuff. Good yeah. friend of mine, Old Marine, full of power liquor. Um, he, when he saw that I was getting the cigars, he reached out. He said, "Hey man, I got some stuff." He sent me like a half a dozen Cubans that were like from 2010, 2012. Mm -hmm. um, like one of them was from like, Um, You know, it's Gloria like, Monterey, Romeo Julieta, like uh, um, in there. And then he had uh, the Biaje Scott uh, Cross. I don't know if you remember the. I think that's what it's yeah. Um, and the zombie, and then just the, the LE from that year. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2014 sure. or something like that. I tell you what, that I, I, I don't usually review cigars that nobody's ever going to go find. Right. But I, I, I smoked that zombie, and it was one of the first reviews I put up on the site because it was just wow. Yeah. I was blown away. Yeah. I mean, usually you get cigars, a lot of cigars have been aged that long. They start to go flat you after can, a while. You, you yeah. A lot of them do. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times you're typically looking at like some really high end Cubans can hold their weight that long, but and not a lot of the other uh, other you know blends from other countries that right. do do very well. Right? They all now, now he's also like a table of some sure. Yeah. Um, and he's shown me like he's got the nice to get size once he's got the tall one. He's got mm -hmm. the all the different sizes. Right. Uh, just loads of them. He's like, I've got stuff that's in here that's so old, I can't smoke through it so much as like, I ruined it. You know, hook me up with some of it just because, like, I, I really can't get to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I sent him some stuff from my humidor, not nearly that age, uh, but, but, you know, exclusive releases that I didn't think he kind of had his hands on and stuff that had, had, had his hands on and whatnot. And just, you know, yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of the fun part uh, mm -hmm. of it, you know, so that was fun. But, yeah, I mean, I think that every, even those those big conglomerates, they need to have their core mm -hmm. line, which it, some people love, sure. some people hate. I mean, they'll always sell. Always, they're going to they need something to support the massive infrastructure they've established. Especially like your Cocoa's and your Hoya de Monterey's and your Julio's. Mm -hmm. They'll always sell because that's the name. It may be the Dominican, but everybody knows that. Name right. Because, oh, that, that's a, that was a Cuban. Yeah, that's a Cuban. right. Some people may think those are right. That, uh, I know for a fact that there are certain people that I know that are just like, Oh, yeah, uh, Total Wine has some Cuban cigars there. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> and were they keeping them behind the counter yeah, or something? He's like, No, no, it said it was, uh, it was, it said, uh, it said Cuba on the band. It's uh, La Aroma de Cuba. It's like, Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not it. Sorry, but uh, if they've got those behind the counter, you let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell me where that is. Um, trust me, I almost, I almost. A lot of money on a box of Cohibas that, that I had. I saw like, yeah. uh, like actual Cubans from, mm -hmm. from a store, but I'd, I'd never shopped with them before. I was a little skeptical. Sure. And, you know, it was a big chunk of change. I'm yes. pretty sure I would have probably had to sleep on the friend's couch for a little while. My wife would have probably tried to divorce me if I would have bought those. But, yeah. yeah so it, it was fun. Talking about Cuban cigars, there's a big there's a stigma that goes both ways. They have they have the sorts that are just like, no, I only smoke Cubans because that's the only real cigar. And then you have people who I'm a little bit more sympathetic with when it comes to Cuban cigars. Like they're overpriced for what they are most of the time. And I would agree most of the time that's correct. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of factors that go into it. A, most Cuban manufacturers don't have aging rooms. As soon as the cigars are rolled, they are packaged and they are gone right. because they are strapped for cash. The cash flow is at a sucky level every day. And so they are just barely holding on. So all they can do is as soon as they're rolled, get them out. I know they're green. Too bad. Every other cigar manufacturer has aging rooms where they're sitting in there six months minimum. Usually it's about a year before they even hit the market. So you have that going against them. B... The agricultural practices have been suffering in the last decade or so, and they are really cutting corners, revitalizing soil, yeah. fermenting the cigars long enough. That's it. I mean, and the revitalizing soil, not to cut you off. Yeah. That's just it. Cuba is, I mean, it's not a big country. No. They have been utilizing that soil over and mm -hmm. over and over and over for generations. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that we've learned in, in the farming industry for, you know, different crops, you can corn, beans, mm -hmm. whatever, you have to rotate to get that stuff 
get the other nutrients back in the soil yep. to make that stuff grow. They're not able to do that because if they don't plant a field, they could lose the comfort. Right. So, and a fun little fact about this, not really fun, it's kind of a terrible fact. When Cuba uh, was first taken over by Castro, his vision for Cuba was to be this sugar growing plantation mm -hmm. that was going to be the world leader. They were going to be the world leader for sugar production. So he turned all of these tobacco fields right. into sugarcane plantations. A lot of the fields he ruined by trying to make them into sugar growing crops. And they started to go back, but it's like certain amounts of damage can't yeah, be undone for a while. You have, to, you have to really, I mean, the amount of nutrients that you have to try to really soil mm -hmm. and just the natural time you to give it. I mean, it's hard. Yeah, and most cigar makers who are worth their soul will tell you, you can't just artificially throw stuff into the soil either. Yeah. Yeah. It'll throw it off. <clears throat> yeah, you, you've got to work it in. You've got to give it time for that stuff to settle out. Um, and, and you just, like, yeah, you, you can't, it, it's, it's, you can't just throw, you know, you can't just throw nutrients into the soil and expect them to take this. Right. Soil. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, I think it's kind of a good thing because much like wine in around the 1960s or so, that's when California wines finally started making a splash in the world and being <clears throat> were actually taught ser took and taken seriously on the global market. Mm -hmm. When there was a connoisseur who was really into wine, but he noticed that all the wines he had they were almost exclusively French. He had a few Italian, right. you know, every now and right, then, right, right. but it was all just French. And then he knew that they were growing wine. They're making wine in California, so he decided I'm going to give these guys a chance. And he made the he staged this wine tasting. It was a blind tasting. He had nothing but French connoisseurs tasting the it was wine. The Catalina wine mixer. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the American wines won all hands down. And then they did it again, like 30 years later, as kind of like, oh, we'll, we'll do it again, like we did 30 years ago, it's the anniversary yeah, yeah. sort of thing. And they won again. So and now they're growing grapes in south america they are right. making wine in south africa in new zealand australia. australia and all these places are putting out really quality product and i see that kind of happening granted it's still very centralized in central america south america so you've got the big players in central america although peru and brazil and costa rica are really starting to get they're into pushing. the game they're pushing. Yeah. and it's really exciting to see yeah i mean because like historically you look at the two of um grow or the two areas in the world that produce that sell the most tobacco or push the most tobacco out you've got cuba and, or that well it's the tobacco that's purchased right it's you got cuba versus nicaragua and every year they trade back right for the who you know and it all depends on the year for that country mm -hmm. right if, right you know nicaragua had, 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 had some bad crop or right. whatever or bad rain season whatever yeah they, they didn't sell as much anything cuba kind of took that, that People are grabbing that stuff up, you know. So yep. it, it is what it is, um, you know. And it's always going back and forth. But it's good to see that, like, get to back to the original point, though, that these small little boutique companies mm -hmm. that maybe they are blended by Pepin, sure, my father, right, or or, uh, or or you know, or the million of like Pepin's the first one that comes to sure. mind because he was literally every all right. all the basically all the guys, all the companies are like these are the the companies I'm going to watch. Probably three of the five or six. Were all blended by the yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah, and he's one of those master blenders who can take a bundle of tobacco, light it up, and tell you exactly where it came from, which is unreal to me. I mean, he must just have an incredible palate, yeah. and I guess that comes with just smoking as much as he does. I mean, the, dude, the dude is literally that's, that's his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. It's like. Especially anything on SLE. I, I, if it's coming, if it comes out of SLE, I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. yeah. And I was talking to you earlier about Honduras. I, Honduras has been putting out some really, really exciting products. And I, I'm excited to see. And I, I said this about six years ago to someone when they were asking about different growing regions. And I said, I think Honduras is going to be the next one that's really yeah. going to make it that's big fair. because mm -hmm. they, and I just recognize it as it's one of those things that I think they've got huge potential right now. It's going to take a while for them to really establish their their growing yeah. potential, and then once they get to that point, it's going to explode. And I think we're kind of seeing that right now. Well, it's, it's the reference, the same the point that you made with, with California and the wine. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, wine, especially grapes, in, in the same way it's tobacco, it takes a lot of years mm -hmm. for what they're growing, what they plant, for it to take for it to actually produce usable product um, that, that that they can they can make a decent thing right. and actually. You, you, you make something out of 
And I think that's what people saw kind of in California, right? All these people started growing, you know, grapes there, vineyards, you know, by everything that they had out there. And then they started making wine that we took them seriously. And started, people started actually paying attention. They realized, yep. wait, this actually really is not new. And it just takes time. Yep. I mean, it takes time to get all those flavors, even in the grape, you know, that goes into making the wine. It just takes time. Yep. Another another frontier that's going to be it's already starting to be used a lot and it's going to continue to get better is domestically in the United States. Florida sun grown tobacco is becoming a thing. Yeah. Uh, we already know all about Connecticut Shade, mm -hmm. Connecticut Broadleaf. Those are fantastic. Pennsylvania, sir. Pennsylvania Broadleaf now. Yeah. Yes. Now we've got oh. Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Yeah. I wonder how long or if ever they'll ever start growing tobacco that's suitable for cigars in Kentucky. Kentucky uh, has got a heritage of growing tobacco, yeah. not typically used for making cigars. It's mm -hmm. primarily for cigarettes and pipe, right. but I think they've got potential. Absolutely. But Kentucky is one of those states where they have such a heritage in bourbon. It's going to be kind of hard to yeah. divert their attention to something else. But I think there's potential there. But Florida is exciting because there is so much Cuban heritage being injected right. all the yeah. time into Florida. There is just a wealth of knowledge in Florida. And, and the climate, the soil, it's not altogether that different. Right. I mean, you've got the saltiness that's, that's from mm -hmm. the ocean that's there. I mean, it's a freaking peninsula that hangs right. out, right? And it's like a, 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 a strong man's throw well, exactly. from yeah. Cuba. I mean, so. I mean, after all, I mean, a lot of Cuban refugees, they shit over, over yeah. and they rode their way yeah. to Florida to get the hell out of Cuba. So, right. I mean, you know, it, it is going to change. I mean, I think I, think I would love to see it's interesting to see because jc newman has the american the blend was is composed of completely american grown tobacco yeah. having smoked it when they first came out i was not crazy mm -hmm. about that cigar right, at all right. you smoke one that's been released lately right. it's a different cigar oh, and th there is something is changing they are getting better at growing the tobacco itself is just getting better yeah. because they're just doing it more <laughs> So, um, yeah, American pearls, I think, are going to be something that's going to be hitting the market a lot more. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing to see, to yeah. see how it changes uh, yeah. uh, how the market kind of looks. Yeah. So, like, All right. I'm, I'm done with my pledge. I loved it. Yeah, that was a fantastic one. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you, Stanley, for joining us. And if you have to leave, I understand. Hope you have a great night. Have a great weekend. I am getting ready to light up the Vince. This is I the latest. I am about to go to that end. This is the latest of the LCA, LCA releases. Um, this is another little cool concept, the LCA. Yeah. Another brainchild of yeah. one Brian Dessen. Uh, he seems to be a trendsetter. Yeah. And uh, this was a great idea. He started it during the whole COVID thing. Brick and mortars were hit hard. It was already a struggling industry. No, please go right ahead. That's what they're for. They were already struggling as it was because it, it, it's a struggling industry by any standard because of regulation, because of public opinion, you name it. I mean, just having a cigar shop is hard because you have to a lot of times contend with neighbors in like a strip mall yeah. who are just like, you know, it really stinks over here all the time because you guys are here. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, ew, we're a cigar shop. What can I do? You know, so he looked at this as a way to help brick and mortars by sending them very, very limited or aged special cigars. Mm -hmm. Give them to these brick and mortar shops for a very, very, very low price, just as something to draw people into their shop. Yeah. And we, every time I go to an LCA shop, I'm, I'm not just buying LCA stuff. I'm because I'm a degenerate. I'm buying all this oh, other stuff there too. Yeah. So, do you light the foot without taking off the? Yes. The, yes, because I, I always I do. This, the one other time I smoked this, I definitely. Yeah, there was a the the, the prequel to this by Blackbird was the Fast Eddie, mm -hmm. which is a reference to the uh, Hustler movie uh -huh. Paul Newman. This yep. is the Vince, which is the Tom Cruise character in The Color of Money. Yep. And uh, I got to say, I like the Vince more than the Fast Eddie. Yeah, Fast yeah, Eddie yeah. was good, but uh, this one just just does it for me. Speaking of which, this will be uh, the next prize for the next drawing that we'll be doing here in a little bit. You're going to get three. That's right. Three of the Vince. I'll send that to the next person who wins the drawing. I'll do that in uh, 15, 20 minutes or so after we chat a little bit more. I love this cigar. It's just, just great. I was, I was, I was with the, 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 the bandwagon on this one saying this was one of the best box, one of the best Vermont box cigars. Yeah. 
um, the hit rule that came out. Yeah. So, yeah, it was interesting because with, with the Vince, yeah, Brian did this one a little bit different than the rest of the LCAs. Yeah. Because it wasn't one of the ones where it's like, all right, this is the LCA. It wasn't like the Sega Bond. I'm sorry, the Sega Bands. Yeah. Yeah, right. That whole thing. We can't talk yeah, about that. Whatever. whatever. We don't want I love that cigar, here's too. Here's what I think to, um, to, to the copyright laws. Expletive, expletive, expletive. expletive. <laughs> well, do you know what the, the, the big hang-up apparently was? Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't even the copyright law. What really got him into trouble was because it had an image of a cinnamon roll on it right. that they were trying to market to minors. Oh, wow. Did not, yeah. yeah. That probably came from somebody. Yes. Yes. Really yes. So, yes. Uh, yeah. You can definitely feel all kinds of butthurt with that. Yeah, one, lots of butthurt there. Uh, yeah, so I, I honestly... But yeah, so since he did this, he had some in the shop, which... As soon as people start smoking this in the monthly box, they're like, I'm gonna need one yes. of those. Yes. So those sold out. And then he's like, and then Brian's like, man, should we he actually he was yeah. doing polls on the group on Facebook and was asking, hey, like, what is you know, what would you guys think if we made this CLC? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of debate on it. Some people said yay, some people said nay. I personally said, do what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, so instead of people getting three or four boxes of this, yeah, they only got one. Right. So they, it was a very what a first world day. problem, you know. <laughs> but you know, like most of us that are, like you said, the generous that spend all of our, you know, retirement money, right, on um, on cigars, uh, you know, yeah, you, you know, lots of places that are breaking borders, right? You support them. Like I, I support uh, a lot of the, obviously I, I support the cigar line on mm -hmm. the hill. Uh, cigar Club, yep. LCA. Get the hill all the time. Area. Yeah. So I support them a lot. I like them, they're great people. Great stuff. They really are great people. Yeah. Really. And, and uh, they, they they have you know they have all kinds of stuff uh, in there. And honestly, man, it it you know I, but I also support a shop in uh, West Virginia um, <laughs> called Mountain Premium uh, Mountain Premium uh, Tobacco. Um, and uh, sorry, Mount, Mountain Smoke Premium. Tobacco. Okay. Um, really great people. Um, if you're in the Provada group, you probably already know there's a, a little bit of a, a discount code that if you buy, if you're a Provada member, you can have a certain discount code. Oh, nice. That, about that I will not mention on here in case there are other people on here that are not Because <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to tell you if you can get them cheaper because yeah. you're going to steal the ones I want to Yeah, buy. that's right. No, I'm kidding. But no, for real, they are, uh, you know, they, 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 Yes. Um, and the, yeah, so the, yeah, the yeah, and that was the idea behind the LCA was just to try to infuse some money into these mom and pop shops. Uh, he makes the point often that without brick and mortar, the cigar industry is doomed. Yep. And we gotta we gotta keep them open. And plus, I mean, they're good to have. You need to have mm -hmm. a public space where you can enjoy a cigar. It's so I think it's vital to American culture. And if it if it goes, American culture is not going to be the same and uh, we need more of them uh i i've said a number of times that the reason the primary reason that i started the channel was just to try to get more people into the cigar world oh, yeah. because it's just the more people who are in the cigar world, the better it's going to be and that's right yeah honestly like it's pretty great because i speaking of another great thing that i wasn't really necessarily thinking about when i started the blog but it's really happening like i've got buddies that i've known for years that one, I had no idea that they were big cigar heads mm -hmm. or, or, or even into that. And then they're like, dude, I didn't realize that you yeah. either. And then it's like, oh, okay. We start having these conversations. We start talking about the stuff. And it's just like, oh, man, I got I to gotta, you know, have this. And right. they start buying stuff. They start getting into it. Good, close friends of mine. They start, you know, years ago, a couple years prior, they're like, I'd never be into cigars. And then all of a sudden, like, we don't know. Like, yeah. so, you know, and, and, yeah. and it's great stuff. And it, it's so fun more and more people getting into it and, it and it's just like it just makes it a good time I it mean, does sharing it with people people asking you questions makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy it does it gives you the warm and fuzzies uh, yeah. and that, that's something too my, my wife is not a cigar lover in fact, when I first got into cigars, she was very much a cigar hater. Uh, and I, I can understand the sentiment from her perspective. Uh, the longer that it has gotten on and the more that younger siblings of mine have gotten into it, I've, I've got a lot of brothers 
and almost all of them are into cigars in some way. And uh, every, you know, Easter, every 4th of July, every any holiday where we're outside, cigars are coming out. And uh, I think nothing wrong. No, please. The, the Balvini would probably go really well. Probably. Um, if just because of the kind of the rich decadentness to this. Hit as, me up, brother. As well as the cedar aspect yes. of this uh, stick. Was um, is uh, really friendly. I really like that. Um, you know, it's just yeah, this is something cigar. impressive about the cigar or any cigar that does this. A lot of time, a second cigar, especially after one is full bodied as the pledge, flavors in the second one tend to get a little muddled. You don't taste it as well. Yeah, not not so this, much with this one. This one is just so clean. Yeah, it's cutting right through it. No, all. yeah, I think honestly, I just think that like. The, the strengths that were with the from a from, from body perspective, um, you have a lot of that body. Some of the, uh, like, a, like a Jack, something like that, or the color of the espresso, uh -huh. something like that. Uh, more towards the animal, more clothes, yeah. things like that. This yeah. one, entirely different, but the body, while it may not necessarily be as, as high in body profile, mm -hmm. Like I said, the cedar notes are extremely yeah. that that more like the decadence to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit, I'd say, almost sweeter to, to, yeah. to the, on the tongue. Yes. So it's, it's different, right? But it, it's the same time, it doesn't get washed away by, by what you are smoking. Mm -hmm. What we just smoked. Right. Um, and it definitely one of those ones you can smoke at any time of the day. Yeah. Enjoy. So, yeah. so that's, that's, that's kind of nice. Thing. That's a hard thing to find, too, because there's a lot of cigars that were kind of designed or that just happened that way are just better at a particular time. I've had this one in the morning. I've had it in the afternoon, and now I'm having it at night. Every time I've smoked this cigar, I've been happy. So I, I was a little. I mean, I, I still loved it when I smoked it the first time, but my Provada box had hung up three weeks. Yes. In transit. Yeah, and that has become a thing lately, and it's not Provada's fault. That's no, the postal service yeah, fault. Yeah. So honestly, I have not had as much of a problem. Not going to work lately uh, of of getting my stuff wherever, wherever I order it from. But in regards to USPS, my, my box in March was here in five five days. That's not bad. So I can deal with that. Um, you know, but like oh, the, the February box. So yeah, it'll be delivered on Saturday. All right, cool. Saturday It'll be your Tuesday. <laughs> the, the third Saturday after that. Wow. Like, oh, hey, here's your box. Oh, like, oh geez. Hey. Thank God they have those humidor bags. No, I mean, I mean, I know that temperature abuse is a thing, but at least the humidity. Well, especially because it's cold as hell. Yes. Right? So. Yeah. I was really worried because when I ordered my box of the Silver Mesa Brulee Blue, it was after the first batch had all been sold out. So I got them through cigar and pipes because they were the only ones that were mm -hmm. offering pre-order. Mm -hmm. And I, they told me, okay, they're probably not going to get here till the end of December. Right. Okay, right. fine. I get them at the end of December. Yeah. Uh, then I got a notification like the next week, this is in mid November yeah. saying they're on their way. I'm like, no shit. Oh, right. Great. Yeah. And then three weeks later, they got, it. <laughs> it was just like, oh shit, please, please don't let me open this box and see a bunch of crack oh. wrappers. Cause you know, that wrapper leaf is a delicate one. It is. And yeah. they, thank God they yeah. all got here and they were safe and yeah, they were they healthy. Were and, happy and, and, and then I spoke one after about a few weeks after and they were fine. So I'm, I'm was happy with that, but I kind of made me uh, a little scared yeah. there. Trust me, I've 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 always had that that, that issue. With, always had that fear when I'm buying Cubans because you can't. You know, obviously, you can't. They're not illegal to get. But right. You can't really. You can't buy Cubans in the United States. Right. At least that I'm aware of. Um, I usually over order a lot of mine from like Monte Fortuna cigars. Monte or Fortuna or, or I have those, um, yeah, I, I've gone good. I've gone through Cigar Terminal a couple of times mm -hmm. with okay. pretty good success. Okay. Yeah. They offer a pretty good sampler of ten for like a hundred bucks. Oh, that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad, and you get some good stuff. I mean, you get you get the Hoya Monterey Epicure, mm -hmm. you get a Monte Cristo number two and number four, you'll get a Romeo Short Churchill. I mean, you get yeah. some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, some of the ones that I think even people who are new to the cigar world will actually appreciate yeah. and not have to spend a fortune to get Absolutely. even cigars. So. Yeah, because you know, like don't get me wrong, like some of the greatest Cuban cigars are are you know like the Cohibas. Right. Like, that one's just like, like, don't don't expect to spend any less than probably yeah. fifty to hundred dollars yeah. a stick there, yeah. but they're amazing. But at the same time, honestly, 
Monte Cristo, like the number five full short guy. Yeah. Uh, I have some poor Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Yaga. I probably <laughs> probably wrong. So don't don't head me up on that. I'm I'm not. I, I'm not going with Spanish. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm a German guy, right? So it is what it is. But, um, you know, it, 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 I ordered those and gotten those in, and they just, I, they, the, the nice thing that they do is they got the box, right? And they, when, when they got, they open the boxes, they pull it in, right? They close it, and yeah. they vacuum seal it. Yeah. So like, keep the box is protecting them from getting light damage, right. right? And then you got the bobo, which kind of tries to keep it all the humidity mm-hmm. in there. The you know the temperature can still fluctuate, but it really prevents the huge influxes that you get if it's just like a bag, right? Like a bag, right? right. And, and and you know so the cigars are, are pretty tough; they can handle yeah. a good amount. But in February, I was really worried because you know we had well below zero temperatures yeah. here, um, and and luckily for you know, days on end too. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Provada boxes they come from they come from Florida, so you know. They're not super cold. Right. The majority of the journeys of the time that they even got here, it, it, it was a little, it was, you know, they were all right. So yeah. I, 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 and I was happy with that. So I'm glad that they didn't see significant damage. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's another box press, honestly. Yeah. It's this is another one. Of, uh, it's another soft box press. Uh, kind of similar, honestly. If you look at the ring gauge on these things, they're very similar. Really close. Yeah. Very close to the oval box press that this one had. So. A little bit a little more length than this one. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Those Pravada bags are impressive. They do, yeah. I, I've had Pravada bags that I've honestly just forgotten about. I put them on top of my cabinet and then left them there, meaning to put them in there. And then mm-hmm. I come back another month later and be like, oh, shit, I forgot to put those in there. And then I open it up and the, the boba pack's still good. I was like, yeah, yeah these things yeah, are well, incredible. Yeah, the zipper on that thing, is, it, it seals, you know, it locks in there real good. And then, you know, they're very thick. They are, and they got that nice foil lining. Yeah. So you don't you don't get a lot of permeation out mm-hmm. of that that pack, which is good. So yeah, they, that's one of the things I love about them. They don't they don't they don't waste money or they don't spare the expense yes. of just doing it. There goes the that worked out great. Yeah. Good timing. <laughs> um, you know, they don't they you know in the words of John Hammond. They spared no expense when it came to. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm a big. Movie. There's another Jurassic Park to yeah, mention you, there. You, you just use Jurassic Park. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know they they, they did not see the they, they did not the irony wasn't wasted on them in actually spending the money on, right. on, on, on that thing. So yeah, I mean, he told me when I interviewed him that he had no idea that it was going to explode. <laughs> Isn't that great? No, that's, 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 it is me. like it was made for this Perfect. cigar fantastic uh he talked about it. he had absolutely no idea that it was going to explode to what it was in such a short amount of time i mean provide has only been around four years less than four years yep, and uh he had a huge influx of subscribers after he went on brian glenn's channel yeah. to do an interview with him and his wife called him and said you're you gained like over a thousand subscribers during wow. that during that wow. interview yeah, that's incredible. so that's that's unreal um, but that's another element of the, the whole brotherhood of the cigar and sisterhood of the cigar world is, I mean, there are so many people who are willing to just, just let's help you out in some way. Uh, and this was a testament to that. There is also another element in the old school cigar world of people very resistant to change and kind of knocking down the new players right. a little bit. Yeah. So you have a lot of haters yeah. and uh, they're, they're, they're definitely out there and they definitely make their presence known. Yeah. One that came up recently that I really took exception to, and I don't know why, and it wasn't just because it involved Pravada, but it was just so transparently bullshit, was uh, there's a cigar company out there. I'm not going to say the name, but it rhymes with Rakalif. Uh, <laughs> did a, G, a deal where they were just going to not do online sales anymore, and they were just going to do retail sales, mm-hmm. just dealing with brick and mortars. All right. First of all, that's not completely true because if you just do a simple internet search for McAuliffe Cigars, you will find numerous sites that sell their products. So either they haven't got onto it all the way or they're not really being genuine with their efforts. Yeah. Either way, Pravada has some in their shop. They have some McAuliffe products in their regular production shop. And they sent them a, se- a cease and desist yeah. letter talking about how oh, we're going to make stuff bad for you if you don't change. It's like, wait, 
we first of all we own this now because you sold it to yeah, us yeah, so yeah. we should be able to do what we want yeah. with it second of all uh, yeah. you're not telling the full truth here because there's a bunch of other yeah. retailers out that are doing the same thing so i think i think i think where uh mccallif kind of got away with doing that so what mccallif was trying to do i completely understand they tried to basically do with their entire line what brian does with the lc yes they wanted to really support the brick and mortar so which i commend them. that's great yes absolutely the problem is they haven't gone the full extent right. of making sure that even the stores that have online presence right. are selling, selling them online. online right so like you know like you've got store you've got shops out there that have an online aspect to mm -hmm. their um to their shop and, and most of them do almost right i would say that's changed you know every i mean if you're going to survive you kind of have to do yeah, that right because like i mean even you know you may have stuff in stock and everybody's looking for maybe it's not as hot in your area um and, and they'll buy them they'll buy five eight ten i mean that's how i got my hands on recently like eight death bucket kids. sure yeah um i you know i i there is a place in in arizona and i, I won't say which because they asked me not to <laughs> well they asked me not to say that they actually ship them to you because yes they had some bad experience with shipping or anything like that after that i bought all my money back because i got this right they right. probably weren't right. right or really wasn't the start right possible. but they got me the sticks they were in great condition i had a little bit of a splitting problem which with the death bucket which i've seen i've heard really sure a problem still smoked fine wasn't unhappy right incredible smoke right uh again another lca another lca um but so, so they'll do that and they have to because they had a box like 20 of the death bucket too sitting right. on their shelf that they weren't right. selling um, which is crazy to me because Arizona's got a ton of cigars. Yes. Uh, cigars are big in Arizona. Yeah, they're very big in Arizona. I mean, oh, I mean, it kind of makes sense though because you've got so many amazing golf courses in Arizona. Yeah. What do people do when they play yeah. golf? They, they, smoke, they cigars. smoke cigars. So, um, you know, I mean, that's just one aspect of it. Right. But, you know, it, it, it's interesting because they don't, McAuliffe didn't really go with the full extent of making sure. I think they just saw that, that, well, I think a lot of people, for lack of better terms, they feel, they feel threatened by what Brian They feel threatened because, and a little jealous. Yeah, because Brian is an incredible success because Brian did what every entrepreneur hopes to do. Mm -hmm. I found a way to do an angel thing that's selling cigars to the masses better than everyone yes. else, that, ev that is blowing up that everybody absolutely loves. And, and I think that's... Uh, uh, he's doing Brian's doing a good job it. and yeah. people are loving it and I think that puts some other people on notice like hey here comes their team yes so and, and since Cravada is you know pretty much exclusively online with the exception of the LCA right they were a little again they're threatened by it. right and then it, it, if you're gonna and again a lot of the people say well defending McAuliffe you've got you know they're not going to go after shops that are primarily retail that do an online thing and it's like okay but by that standard you could you could make the case that anybody can get away with it for for crying out loud cigars international has a, a retail shop in pennsylvania right you know yeah, it's, it's so just huge. like yeah. if they're big enough where they could say well we have a retail shop so we can get away with doing you know right. and, it's like, and they do yeah. by the way so, so it's yeah. like yeah. Because cigars international i mean what they sell in their retail shop compared to what they sell online it's, yes it, 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 it's it's, it's, you, know, you get the bottom of the barrel, the chains, yeah, yeah, and it's it's, yeah. yeah. So it, it's interesting to see this dynamic. Uh, you know, they've had attempts to be shut down, real attempts to be shut down by other competitors numerous times. It's something they have to face often. Uh, you have to have kind of a, an iron gut to be in this business. I feel like because of just yeah. the vitriol you have to face. Well, and I think I think all the new. People, all the newer cigar blenders, cigar companies. I mean, the foundation, I'm sure they've received. Sure. And what they've tried yep. Because he just does it differently. Yes. I mean, again, I mean, even, even Don T. Lee Band on mm -hmm. these things. It's the artwork's custom incredible. Custom artwork. Yep. It's beautiful. It has heritage and tradition all mm -hmm. mixed in. Like, the, the even, even like, the even down to the box, like, not to mention the fifth anniversary, uh, the fifth uh, anniversary again. It, dude, it, it, the box that he was carrying is like Nicaraguan tradition, where that was the box that the wise man for the festival that it was right. referencing. And again, it, it's alluding to the exact details on the mm -hmm. name of the festival. But that's the box that he carried. I have that box. I yeah. will never get rid of right. that box because you open that up all the way and it's 
beautiful. beautiful. I mean, it's yeah. like, oh my god, I, this is like a piece of artwork. Yes. I'm not getting, I'm never getting rid of mm-hmm. this. Um, like that was one of the biggest things when I bought. The, I mean, a buddy of mine and I we split the box the first time, mm-hmm. and then we bought the second one. <laughs> and, you know, he got the box the first time, I got the box the yeah. second time. I would never get yeah. rid of that box. That box, the statement, all that stuff. It is, yeah. it is heavy. It is cedar. It is beautifully painted on the inside. It, you can't really store anything because it doesn't seal the greatest. But right. it is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful box. I just, you know, that presentation that, that I'm sure Nick has gotten pushback uh, uh, from people that are like, well, you know, like you know, whatever. But Nick is just doing it the right way. He's doing it. He is doing it the way that. You know, people have traditionally done it for years, where they learn how to how to do cigar cigar things, right? Mm-hmm. All the different bits and pieces of it, and 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 then he he put a new spin on it. He put it out there, and it's just exploded. Yeah, I and mean, and at the, the, the companies that really make an effort to put a backstory into their blends are something. It's just something that I really appreciate, and that's kind of a trend that I think anybody who really mm-hmm. wants to be successful with their blends, yeah. give us a story. Because Brian does that in spades, oh, yeah. and then, but other places like like Foundation, they they've they've always done that too. Would you have ever heard of the word El Wellense before no. Foundation? Thank you for actually yeah, saying that. Yeah, you know, really, I, I, but I, I never. I mean, I'm sitting there looking at like what the luck is from my reading here, but it, it it's I love the way that they are. Yeah, what is that? Oh, yeah, but I like the fact that he brings out. These elements of culture that most people never, never know, know about. Yeah. It's a great educational experience when you buy something like this. That's a heritage. Where it yes. Comes from. Yes. I mean, that's the way. That's the way of life. That's mm-hmm. there. And it's great to bring life to that. Right? So yes. That people can see that it's just not. Oh, Nicaragua is just a company that has cigars and right. other things. Right? Like, no, there's a lot of history there. There's tons of history. Yeah. I mean, and it's a beautiful country. It is. Uh, so. Yeah. I love. Uh, there was a, a cigar farm tour that you could have taken i can't remember who it was who was running and i actually thought about doing it but then i didn't have the money to do it right but um they have on the itinerary they give you an itinerary of what the trip's going to look like and they're, they're going to visit three different farms and factories in nicaragua around esteli and other places right. and they tell you as one of the things you're going to need like tell you this is, you should probably wear something like this because of the weather right. and then definitely have like 60 dollars in cash because where we're going way out in the boonies the police you need to bribe the police to get through <laughs> and i love the fact that this i mean that is such a interesting little thing it's like if you are going to make any men ends meet yeah. in places like nicaragua or honduras or even the dominican everybody's got a side hustle yeah, everybody wants and that happen. includes the police <laughs> so yeah. so i just thought that was an interesting little yeah. one tidbit about yeah. if you're gonna t- and it's not like Oh, it's not dangerous or anything. It's just the way it's done. I and mean, it's if you're going to get past this road, you got to pay the police the twenty bucks. And and it's a culture shock. Yeah, people who haven't seen the outside of the United right. States. Right. Uh, yes. They don't really expect that. Right. Don't understand that. And it's just it's a really cool thing. Yeah. That's I mean part of the reason why the Cuban counterfeit market is what it is because even people who work in Cuban factories, I mean, that's about as good a job you're going to get in Cuba for the most part, unless yeah. you're in the upper echelons. Yeah. And they still have to take all the bench scraps and smuggle out some wrapper loops yeah. and make fake Cuban yeah. cigars to peddle off to unsuspecting tourists. I mean, they're not necessarily fake. They're still Cubans. They're still Cubans, but they're, but they're not, not authentic right, factory-made right. Cubans, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> I've always wondered, why is it that of all the Cuban brands, that it's Cohiba and sometimes Monte Cristo that are the ones that are most heavily counterfeited? I don't understand that. I Like, there's a lot of other brands out there that for whatever reason, don't get counterfeited as much. Cohiba is right. the most notorious, but I never understood if anyone knows or heard why Cohibas are the most widely counterfeited Cuban cigar. Please let me know. I've yeah. always wanted to know, and I've never had an answer for that question. Probably because I've never asked the right people. But well, probably, it's probably just when people think it's the same thing the way a lot of other Right. I guess so. The head, the lace head, head. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Right. So, oh, I can get that for five dollars. Nice. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, ten times that much. Yeah. yeah. Now I've actually smoked a fake uh, Cuban before. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I mean, it wasn't horrible. But then I cut open the second one of it, and I realized that what I was probably smoking was in the second, the first one that I had, and I was just kind of like, oh, I kind of wish I hadn't smoked it. Because, right, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, there's literally, like, there's dirt, there's, oh, like, God. hair, there's little oh, pieces God, of wood. Dude. I mean, it's just, like, they're scraping Whatever just the bench got. that they yeah. cut off, in you know? In the lunchboxes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyway. I, I don't know uh, why, but maybe that's just the name. I mean, I guess if, if for example, uh, bourbon became an underground thing and people were peddling counterfeit Blantons, Blantons would probably sell more than, like, underground uh, wild turkey or something yeah, like that, right, I guess. Yeah. That's possibly it. Well, we had, we had that one. Prohibition. Yes, really it didn't work out too we made, well. We made like all the wrong people rich. So yeah, it is. It is funny. Um, I remember. I'm old enough to remember my dad, who was a cigarette smoker for a long time, mm-hmm. lighting up in grocery stores. Oh yeah. And I mean that was a thing. And I remember when the push first came to try to ease people out of smoking cigarettes in public, in public, in, in public like yeah. like indoor public places, uh, but. I remember the signs that didn't say no smoking. It was always thank you for not smoking. You know, there was always kind of a subtle way of like, like please don't, please smoke, don't here. smoke here. It's not against the law, yeah. but we'd rather you not. Um, it was like back in the day with the hospitals, hospitals <laughs> airplanes, movie theaters. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, there were churches I've been to where there were actually old ashtrays in the back of the pews where people would have, I mean, during or, church. Or, or, you know, like I, 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 you know, we, we can all probably remember when like people were all chuffed about um about the uh about not being able to smoke in a regular bar yes and and smoking or not smoking yes yeah 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 i worked at a restaurant uh that still had a smoking section uh and now no one has no one there's no one there's no restaurant that i know of in my area that you just cannot smoke uh and it's it there was a recent push in local politics in st louis it didn't make it, thank God, but it was going to eliminate smoking even in cigar lounges, Oof. which would have been the end of cigar shops. There's cigar shops would not survive that um, because it's not just the people go and then there's the smoke. Do you realize how much money people in cigar lounges make by renting out lockers for personal stashes and stuff like that? I mean, that's a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, like they make a lot of money too. People sitting down and smoking, and they'll they'll buy a couple, they'll smoke one or two. Like you know what? I want another one. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, well, let's see what else. Yeah. Buy a few more things, right? Yeah. That's how they make their money. Yep. Uh, It's just like anything else. They want to get you in the door. Once you're in the door, you're gonna spend more money. Yes. You're just like coming in the door. Right. I'm I'm gone now. So. So uh, Michigan recently had an interesting. turn of events they have allowed smoking in cigar lounges again uh, oh, wow. apparently uh, covid has gotten to a point where they're safe doing that yeah. uh it was f- apparently safe enough to go into a restaurant and eat and drink wasn't safe enough for a while to smoke in cigar lounges i'm not really sure the end of the logic behind that yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh that came up just a few weeks ago and then just recently they finally allowed cigar lounges to actually do yeah, their I business again that. <laughs> but they I, I can only imagine that during that time, cigar lounges must have been doing stuff like free snacks. Oh, they're eating. I mean, yeah. you know, they happen to be smoking at the same time, but they're eating right now. So, <laughs> yeah. I tried to get him to leave. Uh, my boy Ben Riley just chimed in saying about the Cohibas being uh, counterfeited more often, probably because they were linked to Fidel Castro and have some notoriety. That's true. Cohiba was originally the private line of cigars yeah. made specifically for Fidel Castro later taken over, I think by Trinidad yeah. uh, after uh, Cohiba was made kind of public. Yeah. But uh, Cuba just had a recent thing uh, where they allowed it, the expanding something about the expansion of businesses were allowed. Again. I don't know the details. I probably shouldn't have even brought it up because I don't even know what it is all right. the way. All I know is that there's a little bit more economic freedom going on in Cuba. So maybe that's going to be a good thing Slightly later on. Looser, uh, yeah. The restrictions of communism. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give away some more cigars here, which means it's time to bring out the pickle jar. Uh, Before I do that, if anybody else who has not entered yet wants to get in, feel free. I'll give you another couple minutes, and uh, then I'll pull the name out here. Well, I'll have I'll have Sheldon pull the name out here to make sure it's completely unbiased. The the hand, the the lucky hand, the magic hand will do its work again. So, uh, as a reminder, we're giving away three of these Vinces. 
We are we are smoking these right now, and they are just. Lights out. This is the third time I smoked this, and it is just as good as the first time I smoked it, and it was pretty good the first time. Um, these are LCA. They are quickly running out at all the LCA shops, even around here. Whenever an LCA drop goes, I stop by three different places and pick up my limit in each one. I really know which one you're going to. Uh, yeah, I, I hit. Uh, there's a new one. Uh, just opened up in. Um, out west, it is is called Triple Leaf Cigar. Yep, Triple Leaf. Yep. And uh, a pretty cool little lounge yeah. they got in there. Shall I say the inventory is a little bit limited, which is understandable for a new shop, although they are expanding. Mm -hmm. I saw that they just added some Oscar Valadares to their lineup, so that's kind of cool. But they've got an incredible lounge. If anybody's in the St. Louis area and you're out in West Manchester, check them out. They are a great shop, fantastic, comfortable lounge. They took over for a from a failing shop that was just being let go for the last five years and uh, it was originally called i think tnc tobacco which stood for town and country tobacco which is where it's located and it was a disaster it was yeah. just they were never doing anything i pretty sure the last year that they were open i had more cigars in my house than they had in the entire oh, gosh, shop yeah, and uh, so i was really happy to see that shop being taken over all the people over there are really good they'll treat you nice and they are an lca retailer so check them out um so i stop by there and i always go hit the hill right. and then i there's a couple of online places yeah. that also do lca drops i'm like yes i'll take a five pack of those yeah, and yeah, i'll yeah. patronize yeah. the local shops as well I, yeah i usually try to hit the hill and then that's yeah but if i'm still one more i've got yeah one or two usually... lit's a bit of a drive for me yeah it's well it's a hike for me it's yeah minutes. <laughs> yeah probably even but, more for you well no it's 45 minutes for me from the house it, because i just hit 64 and it's sure straight out, so. yeah. um yeah, it's not too bad. So. Yeah. But uh, this is the cigar we're going to get rid of, give away. So let's go ahead and draw a name. Sheldon, if you will. All right. All right. If, it's, if, it's, uh, if it's Stanley, we'll just pick a different name uh, again. Poor Stanley. Sorry, Stanley. Poor Stanley. You can read my handwriting. But, but, uh, butthead. Butthead. <laughs> butthead, you had won. I don't know what your real name is, but if you can uh, email me, jonascigars at gmail.com. Send me your contact information, and I will get those out to you just as soon as possible. Probably will be on Monday, considering we're going into the weekend here. But, uh, yeah, you won a three-pack of the Vince. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much for uh, supporting us. Yeah, you won't, you won't regret that. You will not. Fantastic. The best $5 you ever spent. Yes, for sure. For sure. All right. Going on to the next topic. Let me get my little handy-dandy notepad here. <laughs> so, uh, Trends. You see in the cigar world right now Ooh. i mentioned earlier uh the bigger companies kind of getting into more creative concepts behind cigars something that i see a little bit more and i'm really happy about is all these food related yes. themed cigars yes. uh and we've got stuff like from steve saka he has the burnt or not steve's uh, red meat lovers yeah, yeah. Who, who is those burnt ends? Is that Ezra Zion? Yeah, Ezra okay, Zion does burnt ends. But I mean, like it's almost every good. cigar that they do is some type of food yeah, related. Yeah, I mean, you got the chocolate peter cookie, you got the chocolate truffle, yeah. you got the cookies and cream, you got the cookies and metal, cookies, yeah. cookies whatever. Like yeah. That one was recent. Uh, uh, yeah, I got a bunch of different ones. But I'm seeing other companies getting into it too. Yeah, well, I mean, Punch is another great Yeah, Punch has been doing that with Chinese takeout. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, I think we hit one of the other trends already kind of a little bit. It's like bigger cigar lines doing their exclusive releases uh, yes. at, at, outside of their core line. Um, and just then, kind of pushing the envelope a little yeah, bit. They're, they're Venturing out. Yeah, you know, they're seeing what the response is. And yeah. I think, honestly, I think, I think when you package something the right way, you give it kind of like, I won't say gimmicky, but you give it that like kind of flashy, like, this is way different than what we yep. usually do. Um, they, they, you know, people are like, all right, I'll try it. And then, like, when you get that response, like, yeah, people like this, you guys should do this yeah. more. They love it. So, um, there's that, and um, I mean, well, one thing I've been seeing a lot more manufacturers are actually kind of giving you a little bit more detailed specs on what's in the blend. You know, they're actually talking about, well, this came from the Hamastran Valley in Honduras, and yeah. this, this is important because of X, Y, and Z. With this one came from a double fermented Connecticut wrapper, which develops the flavor a little yeah. bit more. Just knowing that they're dealing with a little bit more of an educated consumer now, and they want something that is don't just tell me okay it's you know nicaraguan filler and binder with a connecticut wrapper right. tell me a little bit more than that right where's it from 
Right. Yeah, where's it from? You know, what, what, what what's the year? What's the age? How long has it been sitting? Like things like that, and they, they really push that out there um, for for people to yeah. kind of know. So that's a, that's a great point. I mean, you know, people are like they're like said more people. You know, the cigar, cigar world has blown back up. There's been a cigar boom, and honestly, yep. I, I won't really honestly attribute that to COVID. I mean, no, a lot of it. I, I think so. Because, I mean, at least, I mean, at least from what I can tell. I mean, coming from personal experience. Sure. I know I definitely smoke more during COVID. Way more. Way more. Way more. So, I mean, and I think that it's just because people are home. They're, they're, they've they got the time to sit around yes. and smoke a cigar or they're teleworking. You know, they're out on the back porch, you have the plant back like the way the laptop, both smoking a cigar. Because, hey, boss don't know boss don't right. Care, right? You know, so I think that's a pretty cool thing. Um, one of the rare know. benefits of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah we, we, you know, we didn't get a lot from that. No. That was one of the, one of the, one of the boosts. You got to take some silver lining hey, somewhere. Yeah, I got to make the best of everything. Not so great. Well. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know that uh, Crown Heads was actually one of the first to kind of tap into that whole food themed with the uh, um, the La Carême. Yeah. Because yeah. it was supposed to be kind of a tribute to like the the chef Carême, who was this famous yeah. chef in the mm-hmm. French uh, hot cuisine culture. Yeah. And he was the kind of the guy who started the whole concept of like chocolate souffle, yeah. and it was supposed to mimic a chocolate souffle yeah, so without I, being an infused cigar. Yeah, I I, uh, I had the opportunity again from a good friend of mine, again, not to mention Crown. <laughs> he gave me a 2019 version, one of the 2019. Wow, ones, yeah, right? I had that one. And I love the 2021. Mm-hmm. Nineteen page on it. Yeah. It just... Now, see, I had the 2019. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a bellicosa, was it not? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I had that one fairly fresh, like it had just hit the market, and I did it for a review. And I will tell you the mm-hmm. difference between it fresh and and aging for a little bit is phenomenal. I actually preferred the original version of the correct Lock to the 2019. Yeah. I need to smoke the 2019 again. Yeah. But uh, I haven't tried the reup yet, mm. so I'm interested to see because that was that was a great blend. Yeah. I did. I smoked the 2021 uh, a few weeks ago. Surely a couple weeks after it kind of like hit stores. I'm talking to you. Because, um, you know, if it's brown heads, and I can get my hands on them. Yes. Line. So yes. Um, they, they actually just recently released their lineup for the 2021 20, company. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm I've excited one of my uh, supporters is going to supposed to be sending me a mother church, which I'm looking forward to, which is right. exclusive to JR's. Right. Um, but it's a kind of a cool concept with them being based in Nashville and Mother Church references the the concert hall with yeah. all these big country music stars uh, played back they, in the day. Yeah, they did like like for instance, I mean they like uh, Crown Heads also did the exclusive brand blend for uh, LCM or uh, yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the cigar it's one of the really big cigar shops. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's LCM. If anybody knows, help us out. Yeah, here. I appreciate sorry, it. I'm, I'm drawing. <laughs> like, the name of the Wabash Cannonball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the reference to the, 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 the one of the original, the fastest wooden roller coasters, yeah. say, you know, in the world at the time, and and you know, back in the day, and uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty good one. Uh, yeah. You know, everybody that's seen it had a pretty good response. Yeah, so. Tennessee Waltz was pretty good too. Yeah, um, um, and that was one that was originally only supposed to be sold at particular shops in Tennessee. Uh, and then they have since expanded, so a lot of other places have it. I think the four kicks was that way too, originally yeah. as well. And that was just expanded to all of them. Yeah. But this is one of the ones they keep in regular production. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's part of their core now. Um, another one that has uh, been going into the food arena, Noel Rojas, as I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. he's got one that just came out uh, called the Street Tacos, which I'm uh, kind of excited yeah, about. I've heard about this. Uh, yeah. I've got them and I'm, they're ready to go. Uh, oh. They're going to be up for vote for the next month of review. So that'll be coming. I'm pretty sure that's going to be voted in because who doesn't want to yeah, talk yeah, about street about tacos? Uh, but yeah, I think there's, there's going to be, I think going to be some more of these sort of Latino style food themes coming out, you know, street tacos is kind of the tip of the of course, icebergs. Yeah. There's, there's gotta be some more coming around the yeah, corner that would course, just, people would eat them up. Well, I mean, you no can, pun intended. And you've got some. You've got some of the the um, the LCAs. Obviously, have been right. The trail mix, the cookie, yeah, the Sigabun, the, Siga, uh, the infamous Sigabun. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, Lost and Found has been doing this a lot yes, too. Yeah, Lost and Found has been a lot. Of, honestly, 
so so that was the second one. I was not a huge fan personally. Go for sugar I, one. I was not. It wasn't for me. Um, no, some people absolutely loved it. They got all the different nuances from that. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got too Sure. You know, I mean, which is which is it wasn't a bad smoke. Right. It wasn't one that I was like, hey, you know what? I'm loving this. Luckily, I only bought a couple of them. <laughs> um, so you know, I still got one in there. I wanted to let that one age. Probably sure. Like a year before I could release it. Yeah. But um, so maybe a little bit of age, maybe a little bit better, but. But yeah, but I mean, but yeah, so that, that's been a really cool thing. Um, you know, some some it's funny. Some people hate the idea that they're they're doing like a uh, well, this is the flavor. This is like the if they're naming it after like a sure type of thing. Right. I hate that. I don't you know like don't tell me what I want to do. Yeah, you know, don't tell me what I'm smoking. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that one's that one's interesting. I like that. Uh, you know, I think I think it's really cool. I enjoy it because you know, it makes. It puts something in your head. Maybe it's a placebo effect. Sure, our it, suggestion. You know, yeah, but, but at the same time, like I, I smoked numerous ones along those food kind of related lines. There was the Thai tea. There was the yeah. Thai noodles. Those are both um, were one on one. Yeah. Um, I think Thai tea was Espinosa. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, the other one, yeah, yeah you're... they're really really good. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, great ones. So, so yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh other cigar companies that are, they're trying to get into a market of people who don't think about cigars that in that way like yeah. people who are into cigars know that you can get chocolate notes you can get cinnamon <laughs> you can get yeah. thai spice yeah. you can get all these things i think they're trying to open more people up actually yeah those are the notes that you should Right. And they're not going for minors, by the way. No, no, no. They're not going for underage smokers. That's the last thing the cigar world wants. But I think the whole concept of opening up the possibilities <laughs> to people that, you know, there are notes in there. You might actually get them. That's not just, you know, tobacco and hay and all the other stuff that you typically associate right. with cigar smoke. Right. There's a lot of richness in there that yeah. give it a shot. You might actually pick up some more stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of the write ups in, uh, Pravada also kind of set them and keep coming back to Pravada every time I talk oh, to yeah. people. I they mean, they, you know. they kind of drive things. But the the notes that he puts in there, I would my, myself, I don't taste everything that he puts Not in. Not everything. There. Some things, yes, some things no. But there are it is really an educational experience when you read the notes while you're smoking a cigar when you're still getting into it. Yeah. To try to look for certain things. Like, well, maybe I'm I'm going too fast and I'm not right. taking the yeah. time to figure yeah. this out. And you'll, I'll, I'll be damned if I didn't realize that there was a lot of stuff in certain cigars that I was missing. Right. And it's like, or he puts a name to something. It's like, I couldn't put my name finger yeah, on yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. But now, and that's, and that's because why, he says that, that's exactly what I'm getting. And that's why I, after I smoke something, I'm like, there's something in there that I couldn't put my name on. And I'll smoke it and I'll kind of look it up and see what other people have done or other right. people have seen. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. But it's not because like I need some help even. Right, right. But like again, everybody's palate's a little bit different. Some of us who have an experience, like, like the other day, I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, it was the uh, Rocky Patel RB one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, big, I think it's total size uh, or slightly bigger. Um, uh, and it, it was beautiful, like orange and white wrapper. Yeah. And it, was, it was it was gorgeous cigar. I, mean, I like Rocky Patel, but a lot of the regular cigars and stuff, I'm like, yeah. right. But like that RB one was just. I was like, wow, this is really off, off, off the yeah. top here. I really like that. Um, and, you know, had a lot, a lot of citrus notes. Like, like, it almost had a lemon mm-hmm. yeah. thing. And it was really interesting. Like, I've never pulled that from a right. before. I was like, I'm, I'm tasting this. It tastes like a lemon. It tastes like a lemon. So yeah. Not quite. You know, it's not like super sweet. Yeah. What is it? You know, I'm like, that's it. That's what it is. You know, and it was interesting. And like, when we Or like, this clove we always alluded to. He's like, what is that taste? Always oh, getting this. And then I was cooking one day, and and I had put it together. I was doing like a pot roast or something. Uh-huh. And I put some clove in there. Like, I'll be it. damned. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And and it, it helps that if you you've tried a lot of things in the food world, you have a better. Uh, flavor vocabulary to draw on too to yeah. kind of articulate Absolutely. what it is you're going yeah. with. It, it is funny when you when you are doing reviews for video or for blog posts, uh, finding the right things to say that aren't going to turn people off. Right. I mean, 
I've said this to a couple people before is like, there are times where I'll have a, a cigar was like, I'm getting definite notes of something that reminds me of like a fresh cut tree, like right. sawdust yeah. or, yeah. or, or a, like kind of damp cardboard or something like that. Those don't sound appealing. No, no. Those sound kind of shitty, right. but there's no denying that they're there and they're kind of enjoyable when they're in the form right. of a cigar well, flavor. Because it's not like it's just that. It's not like you're just smoking a wet cardboard <laughs> right. paper. Or right. Or that you have it in your mouth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, well, I mean, I think that's honestly that you mentioned that. That's like with the Vince. And when I say I taste cedar, mm-hmm. there's cedar to this. Like who cigar. wants to put cedar in there? Right. Mouth? I mean, I when I when I when I'm in a like a store home improvement store and there's like a cedar plank yeah there's like the greatest smell yeah. in the world i love that smell it's the greatest thing but to get that in a flavor profile yeah. it's weird because it's like i've never really tasted that before, right right but that's 100 percent and that kind of goes to the whole point of the majority of the flavors that we're getting in cigars are really aromas that we're kind of experiencing in the, just the whole head cavity yeah, in general, right. because truth be told, taste we really only get five. Right. We smell thousands. Right. So if we're taste, if we are tasting, for lack of a better term, nuances, we're not really tasting. Right. Them. We're detecting them well, with our nose and other. Th- well, at the same time, like you know, you look at anybody who's ever talked about taste of anything. Mm-hmm. Taste is probably better than 50 percent right of our smell is, is better than 50 percent of the taste like, yes you like okay so i i look at it like this when you're drinking coffee from a cup like a, like a coffee cup mm-hmm. compared to if you're drinking coffee from a muffle, like a, right. a sealed like you know like travel cup right to me coffee in a travel cup will never ever compare right. to drinking no that's right coffee because you smell it you get right. the aroma you smell it when you're when, when you're when you're brewing it mm-hmm. and that's where a lot of that flip fear the Gosh, flavor profile <laughs> comes from yes. conquest and uh yeah, I, I think that's just like a huge part of it. And yep. it changes things, you know. Like well, that's like with me, I had a I had a sinus infection a couple weeks back. And I just like I tried to smoke something, I'm like, this is just it's not working. So burning yes. So, um, yeah. Yep, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I I my wife and I both had COVID back in December mm-hmm. and I mean, I lost most of my taste and I couldn't smell shit. And it was I when I was starting to get better and I was actually starting to taste food a little bit better, yeah. I was like, you know what, I'll go ahead and try to smoke a cigar. And it was I wasn't ready. Yeah. And it just it did not work. No. And it was like really me. depressing because it was yeah. just like, well, how long am I gonna have to how wait? long am I not gonna be able to do what I love? Yeah. To do? So it ended up being about three weeks, which was rough. Uh yeah. first world problem for sure. But right. it was very interesting and very telling how important smell is when smoking a cigar. Yeah. It's like you're really not tasting it you no. are really smelling it just, yeah and the textures in your mouth are definitely there and that's a part of it yeah. but it and, and, and smell is such an emotional driven sense uh there are so many people like one of my uncles is huge into nascar and nhra <laughs> and he's taken me to a couple of drag races at the track across the river and um the smell of uh burning hypo fumes from a drag engine is it's it's awful oh yeah but after I went to the second time, because I had so much fun with that first drag yeah. race, the second drag race, I went, I really love the I smell love of this. that hypo yeah, fumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just because, and if I didn't have a good time, I would have hated hypo fumes still. Right. But yeah. because I had such a great time, there you go. Well, and, well, it's like it's like welding or anything like that. The smell of hot metal, the mm-hmm. smell of like, you know, diesel fuel, the smell of anything like that. It doesn't smell great, but it's one of those things that's like, I really enjoy it. It's weird. You know, you know it's an interesting thing because I think, and you tell me your take on this. I think that males, generally speaking, uh, more intuitively connect with some of the more like toxic smelling sort of stuff like gas, yeah. Sharpie marker, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. alcohol even. Yeah. Um, whereas I feel like women, generally speaking, it's more of an acquired taste and they eventually come to yeah, like it. Yeah. Whereas like I think men typically just kind of are drawn to it and maybe that's why there's more male smokers than female when it comes to the cigar world. Yeah, I, it's also I think it's the stigma. I yeah. guess a lot of things that kind of, uh, that kind of plays into the, the male versus female cigar, the smart cigar smoking world. But yeah, I think I think men's senses are, 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 are more attuned to like the more accurate, I guess, smokes. Or just yeah. intense. Yeah, I mean, I, intense, yeah, stuff. So, you know, like, but hey, it is what it is. Yeah, and because you'll see, I mean, there's a ton in the Hispanic culture 
tons of female smokers. Yeah. And yeah. but it's because it's so such a part of their culture. Exactly. It's yeah. been around forever. And I'm sure that there are so many positive memories associated with tobacco smoke that it, it just it gets okay. they, they get it. Absolutely. Um, so there's quite a few. There's like I mentioned, Yamil, who I haven't seen yet today. I hope she's all right. Uh, but uh, she is uh she lives down in Florida, and she's she's a grandmother, and she is a Cuban expatriate, but she is a huge cigar smoker. Right. Probably the only grandmother that I know of that smokes cigars, <laughs> but the coolest lady. And uh, thinking about you, Emil. Um, uh, but uh, but it, it's it, I've always found it interesting how, generally speaking, cigars it's it's always kind of a male dominated uh, area. Yeah. But I see that changing too, mm -hmm. uh, and e even my wife just the short span in my life of smoking cigars like i said she started out as a cigar hater now she's she's more permissive and now it's like no it's, it doesn't bother me as much right. and uh before it when at family gatherings it was are you gonna smoke a cigar and now it's are you gonna smoke a cigar yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. my wife can kind of be the same way it kind of depends and it's more for us it's more so the fact that like we have we have a really we have a really good yes. Uh, my son, my youngest son, he's a year old, just turned a year old yeah. in, in mid March, and uh, you know she she's like, oh, she's like, are you gonna smoke right now? Like, yeah, we'll yeah, we gotta leave in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. You can't stay here for an hour. All right. Now, now my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, she's ten, and she. Whenever I get a shipment of cigars in, she's always helped me unpack and inspect them. And she thinks it's really cool because it's something I'm interested in. Yeah. But she's gotten to the point where she's like, she can, she'll smell cigars and she's mm -hmm. picking up notes. Yeah. So great. it's, really it was a uh, pride welling oh, up in my gosh. soul when that happens. And of course my wife is just like, are you serious? Uh, what, yeah, what are you talking yeah, about? And so like, no, it's a real thing. Yeah. She's like, oh, this is mommy. This cigar smells really good. And she takes it. And she's like, it smells like horse crap. What are you yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. It's like, no, it kind of does. Well, like, but I kind of like that. Well, it's funny <laughs> that you mentioned that too. Like, well, like my grandma, my grandma on Easter, we were sitting outside my parents' house and all the kids were kids running around. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my, my grandpa was like, oh, I didn't even smoke. I'm like, what do you mean? My grandpa I literally run a cigar blog. I've been smoking cigars yeah. for a number of years. He goes, oh. And, I, and then my grandma was like, I love the smell. Like, <laughs> you know, I the Ishiban uh, Maduro from. from oh, wow. Ishiban, and she loved that. That's That's a nice cigar. And I've got a couple of them that I got. It's like cigar like, candy. Yeah, it's real good. So, yeah. So, so, yeah, but but, but you speaking of your, your, your daughter, my son, my oldest son, is, his name is Anakin. Yes, just like the Star Wars character. Yeah, that's, yeah so it's not, it's not funny. Um, I'm, sure, I'm surprised you didn't name like Ian and Malcolm or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it was just one of those things. But, uh, it was funny. I was sitting outside with a couple of buddies the other day. And, uh, my buddy Mark, he was there. And, um, you know, we were sitting there smoking. And, uh, and he's like, oh, are you guys smoking Gars? Because that's what he calls Gars, it. Gars, yeah. And, uh, he walks up and Mark, he pulls us as a diesel. Um, he pulled up and he like laid it on, on, on my, in my case here. Mm -hmm. And I was just laying over on the table. And he laid it there. And he goes, oh, and he picked it up. And he put it in his mouth. And he goes, <laughs> Of course, it wasn't right. It wasn't cut. Either. It was so funny. I'm like, yes. Because as as fathers, because uh, speaking from my dad, who was a cigarette smoker, he was always talking to us about don't don't ever start smoking. It's such a bad idea. I really wish I didn't smoke. I wish I could quit, and he eventually did. But it was always one of those things that it was a real like, no, this is we shouldn't be, right. we shouldn't be doing. And of course, as kids, you imitate your dad, and so anytime we pretend that we'd roll up little pieces of paper, pretend to be smoking right. cigarettes, my mom's like, stop it, yeah, it's do not, that. don't do that. Do that. But like, I don't have that same reaction if my kids are interested in cigars or like, obviously they're not smoking them right now, they're oh, too young. Yeah. But I look forward to the day when they're old enough where I can do that well, because yeah, well, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay, so we get some more stuff away. Yes. All right, so the next thing up on the queue. It's one of my favorite Connecticut Shade Wrap cigars. It's a cheaper cigar, but don't let that dissuade you from trying it. This is the Cult Fuerte. I'm giving away a five-pack of these. Uh, this is actually one of the cigars that was in a Pravada box, my first Pravada box ever about two years ago. Uh, and it was one of those cigars when I smoked it. It kind of hooked me into Pravada in a big way. So I'm giving away a five-pack of these. And uh, the next name, uh, if you do the honors, Absolutely. we'll uh, pick the next name here. We know it can't be Bahid or uh, Stanley, so let's see. Will, Willie Edmond. All right. Well, uh, 
or William Edward. William, William Edwards. Edwards. Yeah, my handwriting is bad. No, yeah, okay. That looks like Edmund. No, it's right. William Edwards. William Edwards, you are a winner of the Colt Fuerte five pack, sir. So please email me, jonosigars at gmail.com. Give me your contact info and I will get those out to you right away. My first um, interview I did for the channels with another um, YouTuber called My Bourbon Journey. You should check it out. He's yeah, got yeah. a really YouTube good, room, really, really cool um, uh, YouTube channel and just one of the most uh, encyclopedic knowledges of, of, of bourbon. Yeah. Um, just a really, really well run done channel. We did a, a cigar and bourbon pairing kind of interview. We're just talking about our favorite pairings with cigars and bourbon. And it was a really good. Uh, video ex except for the fact that I couldn't get the streaming software to work. just calling them on the phone and putting them on speaker and just talk to them that way with me on the video. Yeah. It was an ideal. Uh, I was yeah. really disappointed, but it turned out okay, I guess. Uh, eventually, I wanted to have him on again yeah, because absolutely. he was a really good guy to have on uh, and a really nice guy too. He was he's up in Wisconsin, and I was talking to him before we did the video. I was like, Oh man, it's gotten really cold down here. It's like three degrees with the wind chill. And he's like, Oh shit, man, it's been negative 30 for the last week up here. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop complaining. about Stop complaining about the cold down here. I yeah, feel like such a wimp. Yeah, we know that one. Well, we got one, one good pour out of this. Yes. Yes, for sure. That's okay. I'm getting close to the end of the cigar. <laughs> so am I. Now, can you spell Blanton's with all your tops yet? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I've got, I've got two tops from the gold. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, slowly them. Yes. Uh, my, uh, my buddy, uh, the cigar gangster, Mr. Stevens, he actually has the full Blanton's, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, kind of a point of pride for him oh, yeah. on his shelf. So what should we pull out next? I guess I can't really pull out anything. Ah, I know what we can pull out. This is something new. It'll be part of one of the other giveaways. JC Newman has been very, very good to the Jonas Cigar channel. And every quarter they send me <laughs> stuff to review. Thank you very much to Adria Rebecca and all the other good folks at JC Newman Cigar Co. This is a new something for them called the Havana Q, kind of a take off of their Quorum line. Okay. This is a double Toro Nicaraguan Pearl. They sent me in this nice hermetically yeah, sealed yeah. bag. Kind of a bigger cigar. Right. Never had it yet. Okay. Might be a good uh, third yeah. cigar to have for the yeah, evening absolutely. here. We'll give it a run. All right. Pulling it out. Yeah, I'm not too far behind you. Yeah. This one this time. Yeah, I still got a few puffs left, but I'm yeah. looking at this one. It's a pretty well made looking cigar. Mm -hmm. Very nice, sure. tight roll. Mm, yeah, I like that. Nice kind of leather look too. J.C. Newman, the uh, oldest American-owned cigar company in the world. So, I yeah, I, you know, J.C. Newman is one of those that I kind of overlook a lot of the time before they, you know, kind of got connected to the channel. But they put some good stuff out. Yeah. And uh, the uh, Diamond Crown line is probably my favorite. They just put out really, really good lens with that yeah. lineup. Uh, Diamond they, Crown, that's. Julius Caesar's kind of part of it. Yeah, I, I smoked from those the other day. It was incredible. Love yeah. that. Yeah, and boy. the diamond crown, like the black diamond, uh, the diamond crown number seven they sent me a while ago. I've got the diamond crown Maximus next. I'll be reviewing that next month. So very, very appreciative <laughs> for J.C. Newman's uh, contributions. Thank you very much. Yeah, it does not absolutely. go on, uh, overlooked. Absolutely not. That's awesome. Uh, oh, speaking of another great cigar brand that's out lately, have you had anything by Crux lately? I had the, the Pravada one. Yeah, so yes. the Epicure. Yeah, Epicure yeah the Epicure really was good. really good. I enjoyed that. Uh, if you get a chance to try out the Bowl and Bear, okay, and then the Guild, uh, man, those are some really good cigars. Uh, another one of those uh, companies that are <laughs> they're newer, and so they get some things about marketing that I don't think a lot of the older companies are tapping into mm -hmm. enough, and that is utilizing. YouTubers and bloggers yeah. like you and me yeah. to kind of spread the word Absolutely. and more or less get free advertising. Word, word of mouth is yes. Yeah. Uh, and the cigars are no exception. And 
I don't think they realize just how powerful that can be, particularly in such a niche market as like the cigar world. Right. Um, case in point, Brian Glenn from Cigar Obsession, you know, with I think it's Smoke In that they do a, a Cigar Obsession sampler yeah. where he just puts together uh, five cigars that are made by companies, right. just some that are his favorites. Yeah. And they sell like crazy because Absolutely. Brian Glenn says these are good, yeah. you yeah. know, and I'm a grant. Brian Glenn's got a massive following. Yeah. Um, over 130,000 subscribers at this point, which is, first of all, that's an accomplishment <laughs> for any YouTuber, but for a cigar YouTuber, yeah. that's obscenely yeah, that's, high. That's intense. That's um, I, I can't, I can't only imagine how much of a hit it was when YouTube demonetized all cigar channels. Ouch. I, I mean, I was just doing some simple arithmetic in my head going through yeah. rates that I know of. He was clearly clearing three, four grand a month oh, yeah. on on the monetization mm -hmm. there. And that went down to maybe a couple hundred. Oof. I mean, can, 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 it'd be so mad. Oh, <laughs> I'd be yeah. so upset. Yeah, it's starting to drizzle a little bit. Yeah, I'm okay. we're trying to get to that point where instead of yeah. a little late tonight, but that's all right. That's all right. All right. Let's get into this Havana Q. <clears throat> A tight draw. A little bit, yeah. Hmm. We'll see how it does once I light it up. Yeah. Sometimes I get those cold draws that are real snug, and then once you blossoms and surprises you. Ah, yeah. It's not terrible. No. Still a little bit on the snug side, but it's not unsmokable by any means. Okay. So on a given day, what's your typical rate of cigars? Mm. Uh, you know, honestly, one or two. I, I don't get to smoke a ton. I mean, between work and everything else, by the time I get home, you know, the wife, she works at home, so she's, you know, tied up with the kids all day long. I don't really want to try to leave her with her right. all day. So I usually get like one or two. Yeah. Usually it's just the one for me, um, typically. Um, there have been have been days where I'm, I'm lucky and I can get three or four in, kind of like today. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> typically it is just the one. It is a tightly packed cigar. I'll it is. Say that. Uh, it definitely... Um, it is definitely a bit of a, of a snug. snug I do like the body on this one a lot, though. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a little better. Yeah. Getting some nice caramel notes off of this oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. Which is nice, you know. I, I, I like the, that creamier kind of, kind of texture, kind of taste to it. Yeah, that's good. Here, try that out. Yeah, lots well, of uh, vanilla, cream, mm -hmm. a little bit of that, that, uh, that uh, clove to it as well. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a little hard to tell when it's on third cigar on end. Hard to pick up any possible finer nuances that might yeah. be in there, but still an enjoyable cigar. All right. Whoa. I'm getting some bits I didn't get out. There we go. Mm -hmm. So, as far as infused cigars go, 
Fan, not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. No, not a not, fan. Not for me. Um, you know, I, I, I've got a couple buddies who absolutely love wipe your ass as mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm not, I, I'm personally not a huge fan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I take the same way. It's kind of like those flavored beers. I'm mm-hmm. like your Bud Light limes and shit mm-hmm. like that. I'm, and that's fine. If you like those sort of things, knock yourself out. But I, I really kind of gravitate towards just just give me what 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 the tobacco can give me. You yeah, know, don't. Yeah. And you don't. I mean, in my opinion, you don't need to flavor. Cigars. Right. You don't. You don't need. It's kind of like flavoring coffee. Yeah. You know. No. I've had some. Now I, I recently did a little uh, a little kind of giveaway, kind of collaboration with Three Bay Coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, they're really great because they're also another St. Louis local. Sure. Uh, group. Um, and really cool store that he has. He's an aeronautical engineer uh, on the West Coast, and you know he's from the area. He decided, you know what? Done with this, moving back, open to coffee. Um, and it's been great. He's been open for 26 years. Wow. In March. Um, and, and he had a bourbon pecan flavored coffee that was. Out. It sounds good. So, yeah. It was, it was <laughs> one of those ones where it was like a lot, of, a lot of the flavored coffees that I have tried, they're just, they're all powered. Yeah. So much, but they taste was, real artificial. Yes, perfect. Like, yeah. It literally tasted like burnt, like a pecan pie. With that sounds excellent. That sounds really good. Probably a great, great cigar pairing. Mm-hmm. Talk, yeah. let's, let's talk a little bit about that pairing that you did with Ruby Coffee yeah. there, because I I really enjoyed that that little blog post yeah, that she did so, there. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, so that one I actually did with speaking of crew, Kirk's crew, where I did that on the Epicure with with that, and it was great because there was a lot of vanilla notes to that crew, and, yeah. and, and dude, it, it just blended so nicely with mm-hmm. that with that one, and honestly, and then I did. Um, Really did enjoy the Monterey, uh, the Monterey uh, Cuban with their Costa Rican roast. Uh-huh. Was, that was probably my favorite one. I mean, because that Cuban was just, oh, man, one of those like, just that was so good. Um, and then you just blend it with some little coffee that just hits that note just perfectly. Yeah. You can't beat it. Yeah. Mean, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I've, I've given, I've tried to give uh, infused cigars a chance numerous times. Mm-hmm. And I just can't do it. And it's just, it's not that I don't like the flavor per se, but like you said, a lot of times they're overpowering. Yeah, that's almost all you're tasting. Yeah. And it just tastes kind of artificial. Yeah. Like it's not really, I mean, I, I know it's probably kind of a natural infusion of flavors. Like right. they're not using chemicals, but I just don't like that dynamic. Um, so, I mean, Again, if you like infused cigars, I am not going to knock it. You just go right ahead and smoke what you like. But. Yeah, do what you do. Yeah, smoke what you like. That's it. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I just think, yeah, but that's almost why I was a little bit skeptical when I looked up the Silver Mesa, the blue. Mm-hmm. blue. I was like, man, this is a super sweet wrapper. Yep. I don't know if I'm going to like this. Right. But then I smoked, and I was like, okay, never mind. This is really yeah. good. And he was, apparently Steve Saka got kind of annoyed how many times people were commenting of like, are you sure you didn't sugar tip this mm-hmm. thing? You know? And so he went ahead and did, took it a step further and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to make some that are sugar tip yeah. just so you can see the difference. Yeah. No, I haven't had, I have not had I'm the not, sugar tip but ones, but, but yeah, that, that I, it, do, I do have a, uh, Patty Van Winkle family reserve. Yeah. I got one in my drawer too. I, I keep that one in kind of a separate box just because the flavor in that was so pungent. <laughs> Yeah. I chewed tobacco for a little while in my life, a couple of years. To me, that tasted like <laughs> Copenhagen did a Copenhagen or smells like Copenhagen at one point was doing a Jap Daniels infused <laughs> chewing tobacco. And when I smell that, that's why I smell my <laughs> it almost makes me gag. I don't know how I'm gonna smoke it. To be honest. I'm excited because I hear they're really great, but I'm just like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> You know, it's funny because uh, Diesel does a few uh, barrel aged. They do like the Rabbit Hole Bourbon um, barrel aged cigar. I actually yeah, kind of like. Yeah, I kind of like that one, and uh, yeah, good the aroma on that one is particularly really, really good. Like just the foot smoke aroma. Yeah. Uh, the flavors they're decent, oh, guys. but it's like Sorry. the aroma itself is just really, really special, yeah. and I. I still have a few, and I'm interested to see how they hold up after they've been in there for a while. But yeah, yeah. They did smell really, really good, even fresh. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was a little bit different. Like I said, those were a little bit different. I, I smoked some of those as well. 
Um, but yeah, because like some of those, they, they age in their, in their, uh, was, is it the, uh, Derringer, which is the sherry. Aged, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whiskey. I loved that whiskey. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of sherry finishes. That's how I am. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, the, the, the Pat Van Winkle one was a, was a bit yeah. much. Uh, I haven't lit that one up yet. Yeah. A bit steep in price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I still bought it because I wanted to give it a try, but I haven't had a chance to do it yet. But uh, that was another one of those ones that I got the perfect Scarborough box. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was this month, and I got it and I put it in the humidor. And when I opened the humidor, it wasn't like the tobacco and the cedar. All I was smelling. Oh, was like, oh right, no! You're going, you're going <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna put you in a want, bag. I don't want that. Yeah. on all of my other cigars. So I put that in a separate like my inner sealed kind of travel humidor. Right. It's boba in it, so it's good. It's not you know, it'll be fine in there. But man, I, I'm just I'm a little skeptical just yeah. because my, my problem is I associate that with something that I absolutely hate yeah. the aroma of. So I'm just really worried about not gonna like it. Yeah, talking about sherry cast finishes, uh Glenn Morangi, I don't know if you're into Glenn Morangi mm-hmm. or not, but okay. they do a sherry cast one that's mm-hmm. that one's good. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that one's fun. I enjoy that. Mm. Okay, William Edwards says Peppy Cigar has to be all hype slash marketing. That's possible. Mm-hmm. Certainly possible. Well, the rain is starting to come in, so we might just have to wrap this up here a little yeah. bit, regrettably. So we got two more giveaways to do. Yep. We got a five pack of these Havana Qs. I'm going to give away one more time. Let's draw a name out there. All right, let's see what we got. We got five of these guys. Oh, sorry, Stanley. No, oh, bad. Too bad. <laughs> Sorry, man. I hate I hate to do that to you. Oh, well, no, <laughs> we're, we're gonna see a lot of this, I think. Yeah. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, wait a minute. David Rivera. David Rivera. All right, David Rivera, you get five pack of the Havana Q by JC Newman. Just send me your info, Jonascigars at gmail.com. And uh, we'll do one more giveaway here. And this is for the last prize. That is the Trilogy by E.P. Carrillo that will get you one La Historia in E3, the Majestic by uh, the Encore, and then the uh, Pledge Prequel, the E.P. Carrillo Trilogy. And that one is going to Green Octagon. Green Octagon, my man. You get the three-pack of the E.P. Carrillo. I think think everybody who's got something, man, no one was left out in the cold. You all got something. So I want to thank us, Sheldon. Thank you. The yeah, trip out here and hanging out, man. And uh, everybody else who stopped by for the uh, live stream, really appreciate you uh, tuning in and enjoying the smoke session with us. Check me out on Instagram at Jonas Cigars and see all the other posts that I put up there, uh, written reviews. And of course, I put all the announcements when I'm doing giveaways for live streams such as this one. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, click that icon, bottom right corner, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. Uh, next review will be coming out next Friday. Be checking that one out. That'll be the probably the Kung Pao. So Kung Pao by Punch will be the next one on the queue. And then uh, to round off the month, I will be doing the Diamond Crown Maximus by J.C. Newman. And then it's time for another vote for the reviews that will be coming out for the month of May. And uh, there's going to be some great ones up on that lineup. So don't miss that poll. It'll be on the community tab towards the end of April. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you have a great weekend. Smoke a good one, everybody.